I can't right. believe this. Streams up, by the way. Yeah, he's what? a laggy Polish Sora player. Hey, Proto. What's up? Streams up, by the way. <laughs> you <just laughs> found we start. Okay, yeah. We start recording now. Surprise! Surprise! <laughs> Gotta make it fun. Right, let's, let's start recording, and I'll just use the um. Oh my fuck! Turn off yeah. your phone. What? It's free <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> what? Really? <laughs> really? On profession, dude. Hey, dude. Soldier Sunday just went live. Oh, all right. <laughs> That's what the ring is? What the? Oh yeah, his um, his phone has a, a ringtone. It like it vibrates whenever I go on, whenever I go live. Oh, is that what you heard? Yeah. Dude, I'm sorry. I can't help that. It's my mic now. You can just blow up his phone oh. at will. Oh yeah. Let me just call his phone number. <laughs> 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 okay, okay, okay. Stop. Listen, streams up. We can't be fucking having this tomfoolery. No, what is this? What is this right. tomfoolery? Can we have a three, two, one count when we start recording? Uh, yeah. Three. Can yeah. I? Do it? Hold on, I gotta. Did I post a link already? I think I did. All right, I'm <laughs> deleting all this. Wait, is everybody here? Roll call. I Key really song. want. Hold hold on. Hi. Okay. Can I just can I just say that whoever signed up the McLeod Gaming, like SSF2 devs at McLeodGaming.com email for a Pornhub subscription is going to hell. Who does that? <laughs> it was probably that was my little brother. Oh my. God. I think, as a community, we've just accomplished the greatest thing. <laughs> as a community. It's probably the greatest idea. That's how we get our name out there. I can't just bring... Do a bunch of porn. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Wait soon to the Super Smash Flash 2 screenshot topic. Aw, oh, shit. I'm gonna start peeing in, refri in refrigerators. Get our memes out now. Just get your memes out. Oh, dude, okay. this is fun. Um, Trey wants it. I'm already in. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh fuck. <laughs> Replace me. He made that shit. He made that joke like two times. All right, listen. We can't pay attention to the chat as much as we did last time. Why not? Colors you didn't at all last time until the end. Whatever. Whatever. At least Whatever. Whatever. And then the cat. <laughs> Alright. Right. Uh, fuck, is that, is that cough gonna come back now? Sorry, I'll mute my mic. Uh, <laughs> no, what are you- Bye. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> no, oh, I didn't know we were gonna podcast, let me just mute my mic for like 20 minutes. Alright, I'm back. <laughs> it's cool. Oh, hey guys. How's this going? <laughs> Welcome to the Smash Flash 2 pod- wait, hold on, we didn't- we hey, didn't start recording, we didn't, did we? Yeah. Good job. From the Fuck. calendar, okay. A three, two, one shoot or three, two, one. What's going on there? What the? Okay, you ready? What the fuck? You didn't even tell me. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> okay, all right. Let me count that down from three. Then we'll all go, and then we'll start. All okay. Right. So all is right. it three, three, two, one, go, or it's three, three, two, two one, and one. then? What are you I doing, do Afro? Book. You're very God, unprofessional. <laughs> Oh, why do we leave out number four? Oh my god. <laughs> why don't... <laughs> what happened to four, dude? This is a disaster. <laughs> I hate four. Okay, alright. Three, two, one, go, or... What's going on? On the invisible zero. Okay, alright. Three, two, one, go. You could have said three, two, one, go, but... You're a Sonic player. Alright. Yeah. Oh, I gotta go fast. <laughs> Ready! <laughs> Ready! Three, <laughs> two, <laughs> one. I can't. One. Go. go. Of course you say go. Ready? I think I'm ahead go. now. But, oh well. Yeah, who gives a shit? Alright guys, welcome to the Smash Flash 2 podcast. Uh, Afro's your host, why am I... Afro, introduce it. Yeah, why are you? Um, <laughs> hello everyone, this is the Super Smash Flash 2 podcast, the Flashcast. We're on episode 2 now. Um, I have with us today... Soldier Sunday. Hey, how's it going? I have Proto. What's up? 
I have Tac 3. Hey, how's it going? I have T Song. <laughs> my favorite chair. Fall the my only chair. guest that. <laughs> Fucking Grandma T Song. And the only guest that matters today, we've got Mars. Hey. Can't wait till I go over to Grandma T Song's house to play Vita. Whatever, man. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Alright, so, how y'all doing today? Uh, well, let's start off with Mars. Mars, how's your week been? I know you had an eventful uh, tournament happen near your area where you had to play Nairo in Grand Finals. That was like last week, right? I think so. Uh, it's been a good week, only because of that. Like, I've just been reminiscing on that. What do you think you did wrong that set? I didn't grab enough. Because you got fucked up by his Robin. Yeah, that was That's a different day. <laughs> <laughs> we can forget about that. I was just playing really bad, though. No. Uh. Like, at least Grand Finals I was playing, like, somewhat bad, but regardless, I kind of just jumped into a lot of things, like, against his Robin, but I think so. Yeah, because he's hitting you from, like, with the electric from full screen and shit. Yeah. <laughs> Which is I, got a, zero, I got zero to death. A no-brainer, no bueno. Yeah. And your week's been pretty good besides that, right? And then the rest well, of the week that. has been, like, school and then absolutely nothing today. When do you have finals? Because I know the finals is coming up. What do you mean? I'm in high school. Finals, oh. dude. Like, like. Oh wait, never mind. I think maybe I'm thinking of something else. Yeah, I think so. Whatever. Like, we haven't even gotten midterms yet. You want know, finals? Lucky. I'm kidding. All right. Okay. <laughs> what about you, Proto? Uh, I've literally been in my bed sleeping for like the entire week. It's pretty well, much well, it. Well, that's great. Well, that's... then get up. Wait, no. <laughs> I played some Flash 2 games and went back to sleep. That's all I've done so far. Oh, yeah, and work on beta. Yeah, that one. Of course. Oh, yeah, yeah. this is going to be kind of a special episode. We have, like, four devs in the in the call, in the it's podcast. Yeah, yeah, don't it's... talk about beta, though. We literally can't. And the <laughs> biggest dev of them all. <laughs> Me. <laughs> okay. Oh, nice intro. <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Pro? <laughs> wait, wait. So, Proto Week has been pretty much sleeping. That's cool. What about you, Trey? Uh, pretty much chilling with my homies. Yeah. And not mm-hmm. working on beta. And not working, not on, working beta. on beta. Yeah, the usual. Because why? Because <laughs> work in college. In finals, of course, right? Yeah. What were some of the that's... projects you had to turn in? Uh, <laughs> fuck. I had to do some paintings. I had to... Did you paint Zero Six Samus? <laughs> No. Uh-huh. Who the fuck paint? No. I had to uh, do some paintings. I had to design a bunch of posters. And then a portfolio. Yada yada. Take a final for a math class. That's pretty much it. Pretty much the most unimportant class. Yeah. It's useless. <laughs> you might need math as a graphic designer. You know, you need geometry or some, something. <laughs> yeah, know. but it, it wasn't geometry, so. Whatever. I'm curious as to what you guys plan on leaking. Like everything? Sure. Everything. Yeah, just leak everything. Just, just do it. Yeah. You, you, won't get, yeah. you won't get in trouble. So, Proto, you've been playing like Falco all the time, and I don't know, dude, my Ganondorf is just doing getting messed up really bad by your loot. <laughs> Sorry, man. I'm just too, way too good in Falco. I just don't get it, man. It's just a bad matchup. Sorry. Oh, man. At least Falco versus Ken is going to be is not that good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about um, T-Song? How's your week been, T-Song? Horrible. You got work? Work on work on work. Can't even do it. Oh, not no. even working on Beto. How could you? I know. <laughs> I try and do what I can here and there, but it's been uh, quite the struggle. Oh, it's been on me. Pray for t son. <laughs> we'll try. Oh, yeah, man. Um, Soldier Sunday, how was your week? My week's been pretty decent. Uh, I've been sick, so I didn't go to school for Monday. Sick and then I... See, here's my philosophy. If oh, you, boy. It's either you go on time or you don't go at all. I feel like I shouldn't have asked. 
<laughs> well, again, the whole thing. So, I didn't show up for I didn't show up for Thursday and Friday for for school. So whatever. What did you do instead? I played Smash Bros. Two. Oh, and I streamed. I've been oh. streaming daily, so I think I'm like upgrading. <laughs> Because I remember when I streamed like uh, twice, three times a week. Now it's pretty much every day for this week so far. And I'd say that's pretty mm -hmm. decent. Uh, a tournament just happened, but I guess we can talk about that some other time. Because I know some people here just didn't watch it or didn't see it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Uh, what's the name of the tournament again? It was Entertain the Stream 6. E E E T S 6. E same thing. I feel like I'm the only person here that witnessed it other than the soldier, right? Probably. I, didn't. I think so. Um, I believe so. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but you know, it happens. Yeah. You know, man. Um, uh, Dr. Kirby's doing hashtag dual gate. I don't think anyone understands what that joke means. Nah. It's fine. <laughs> it's a funny joke, I swear. As we said, ignore the chat. Yeah. No, nah, don't ignore the chat. Yeah, chat's man. like the chat's the goat. That's the good part. I guess listen, what happened last time with the flashcast is that it was just like mine and Keo's being like very disruptive. Now that they're not here, everything's all good. Yay. Well, apparently, uh didn't Keo's apparently get inspired by the flashcast last time? I, he wanted to work on his neutral, but he just kept going back to his old roots. Oh. AKA, oh, what happened is he's staying with ZSS. Yeah, aka dash back forward smash. And... Well, I mean, that's how you be good at this game. Yeah. You know, I, I, um, for a second there, I, I felt like I was uh, bringing something good to the community, but no, hey, you know. You can bring um, a lot of good stuff to the community, Afro. You can, uh. Where's your Sonic guide, dude? Star Killer made a Falcon guide. You gotta make a Sonic guide. The Sonic Guide. Yeah. I want to, but it would be, it would have to be a video because I don't think Cactus could really explain it all that well. And it also depends on when Beta is gonna be, because. Oh yeah. I'm going to go ahead and assume. Like I'm not gonna like say that uh. It'll take like five years or whatever but if it's gonna be like within the year I just don't wanna work on it that hard and then just be like oh beta's out guess I gotta just gotta redo it or just kinda make like a shitty side video yeah it's like, the beta changes or whatever yeah people do that people do that for uh MKX or whatever cause MKX got changed a lot and they're like oh here the here's the change list yeah. I think we're going to be doing a change list for beta, right? That yeah, is very sure. helpful. Yeah. Very yeah. helpful. <laughs> I wonder if we should do it video form or like on McLeod Gaming. I mean, um, I mean, it'd be nice to do a video one, but I think that could get super messy. Why? Like that would be the long, the world's longest video. Oh. <laughs> well, it would probably be like 20 minutes or so on changes uh -huh. for, for characters. Uh, if you're doing character specific changes, you're looking at like the world's longest video. Yeah, it's a People lot. Watch it. Well, uh, a character. I was watching a character change list for MKX, and that was about 28 minutes, 30 minutes. Oh my god. What? <laughs> Ridiculous. Time yeah. Life. 30 minutes isn't that bad for a change list. Because you're going pretty much in depth and you know discussing all the changes. Some characters, you know. They're gonna have a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, what were some of the topics that we should have been discussing or that we wanted to get into for this? Week? Um, <clears throat> one of the things that we were talking about is that the uh, like top players in this community. There is no undisputed like top player, but I think there's been a lot of them. Is it is it like a lot? Like is it like their own like little arena? I think there's an, like, there's enough like, top players for like a top five. Kind of like how melee has like their five gods, and then there's the people that can like kind of combat them. So they're up there as well. Is Smash Bros. Two sort of like that, or is it like Smash Four where everyone can beat everyone? I think it's. I'll oh, go ahead, Afro. I personally think it's more along the uh, 
I would say it's more the everyone can beat everyone type of deal. Like, the top players kind of change around so often that, um, I mean, we went from, like, we went from PP, from when I remember, we went from PP style, hell, I was considered the top player for a bit there, and I don't know why, but, um, <laughs> PP style, um, Kios, Lunary, and it just, at Soldier Sunday, it just changes consistently, but I feel like everyone could beat everyone. Yeah, because I don't think we've put enough time into the development to have, like, five gods. And mm. all, like, gods have been, you know, losing, <laughs> basically. Because Kios was really good, but now he's getting, like, you know, not grand not grand finals. You know, and all that. That's, mm. that's good. Got to, like, spice it up, grand finals kind of thing. Yeah. And I say SSF2 balance is good enough to the point where anyone can beat anyone. You're not going to see Fox just win every tournament. Or you're not going to see Zero Suit win every tournament. Yeah. But for my list for, like, top five players, I'd probably, since I've played a lot of people, I'd probably go with, over the years, Descendant Sun, me, I, should I say me? No, this is my top five players, and I'm not going to include myself. It's going to be Descendant Sun, PP Style, Kilos, uh, it's another one. During his prime, Trey, no. Tag 3. Mm -hmm. Tag 3 was really good. <laughs> <laughs> but now he's just all washed up. Yeah. So I can't see that anymore. I know how you feel, Trey. Yeah. <laughs> and then that's, that's okay. like 3. And then I can't think of anyone's one else. Uh, I can easily say Kyo's Chaos Zero, but I don't think they're, you know. I think I gotta give him a little bit more for them to be top 5 material. Mm. What about you guys? I don't even know the people in this. So. <laughs> I'd say Kilos is pretty good as well. So Kilos can be in my top four. What about you, Proto? Me? I, honestly, the people you mentioned are probably the only ones that I would mention. Uh, I thought Reimu was pretty good when he did play. But other than that, no real players have really stood out to me. Yeah, there's just a lot of smart players, but not like easily the smartest of the smartest. What about like up and covers? Uh, oh, that's it. That's an easy one. There's a lot of them. There's a uh, Joey. <laughs> there's a uh, there's Joey Kios Chaos Mars. Zero. I think Joey's getting out there. I think he might if he like he's a he's a really really hidden boss, like really hidden. I feel like if he keeps winning some tournaments that he just randomly wins all the time, I think he could be up there. Yeah. I think one one problem that Joey has is that he just uh full hops a lot and he doesn't he doesn't uh take full advantage of Bomberman's dash dance jump cancel grab cuz that thing goes far. It goes really really far. And he can get a lot of confirms off of it. He just full hops too much, I'd say. What is he? Um, he uses Bomberman. Bomberman's really good on the ground because he has like dash up tilt and then dash dance. His dash dance is amazing. That's an interesting thing that the uh, chat brought up real quick. Um, so, would you think that the skill level... Like, what would you say to someone that would say that the uh, skill level was so low that there just could not be gods, exactly? I don't think the skill level is that low. I think anyone coming from any Smash game, if they take a week, they probably can't beat any of the top players in this game. So, let's say Hungrybox has been playing this game for a week. I don't think he's going to be winning a tournament that's stacked. I think the skill level is that good, mm -hmm. or that mm -hmm. high. But it can't be higher. I mean... Nobody's grabbing ledge. And nobody's edge guarding. <laughs> Nobody has a very consistent edge guard. Or nobody's mm -hmm. very consistent at that. And you know, we could all just get a little bit better. Yeah, I feel like if you have like good fundamentals in like another Smash game, it sort of overlays. But Smash Flash definitely has its own thing, like its own fundamentals you need to get used to to like actually like be a threat in the game. Yeah. But the other Smash games definitely help a lot. I mean, Mars plays Smash Four and. You know, I can see I can see the how smart he plays, even though he's been playing Smash Bros. 2 for like 
not a long time. Even though he <laughs> has, but not a long time. Mm. I just need a better laptop, man. Yeah, that pop. <laughs> Dude, that microwave connection. You love it. Knowing matchups is very important in this game, I feel. Matchups oh, yeah. are really important. Oh, yeah. Cause look at DK versus Fox, dude. Everybody's like, I hate DK, but then DK just gets messed up by Fox, and then everybody's gonna be counterpicking Fox against DK. I think that's mm -hmm. a good, like, that's a good matchup or like, a good example of like showing how good a player knows the matchup. Because if the player doesn't, for example, if the Fox doesn't know the matchup, they will get messed up. Yeah. But if they do, they will mess up the DK. It's very, it's a very volatile matchup in that sense, but. Fox should win it in an even standing between skill level and players. Yeah. Oh, uh, I got a question. What do you think are some of the most unwinnable and like winnable matchups in this game? I think ZSS versus Wario is like a crapshoot. You gotta make some hard reads for Wario to win. Donkey Kong. Mm -hmm. Donkey Kong what? Donkey Kong. What? <laughs> Alright. <laughs> <laughs> oh. his, his own worst matchup. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Marth in like every game. Um, I feel like a matchup that's really bad that a lot of people don't don't think are very bad is very bad is uh, Goku versus Falcon. I think that matchup's uh It's unwinnable. Very, it's near unwinnable for It's a very one sided matchup and I know a lot of Goku players have trouble in that matchup versus a lot of Falcon players, but if you play it right, it's really I don't. I don't know if there's been any Goku to actually prove it, other than, I guess me. But I, I. I like played. I think me and Proto have played at least fifty games, of Falcon versus Goku, and I think I've won only like three or four. That's it how. It is not. What? <laughs> it is not a very good matchup for Falcon. Yeah. He does not have fun. That's um, nice and all, but, let's not beat around the bush, and let's talk about Ichigo. Versus Jigglypuff, that matchup. Jigglypuff. Dude, remember oh. pre patch Ichigo versus Jigglypuff? It was <laughs> the most unwinnable. That fucking the side B. What can Jigs do about it? She can't punish it. She yeah. can't do shit about it up tilt either. Yeah. I'm gonna teach you guys. Ichigo just stomps a lot of low tiers, I'd say. He mm. stomps a lot of floaties. I feel. I think he even does well versus uh, Meta Knight. Really? He, his up tilt. His up tilt is just a really good tool to keep them out, and uh, the fact that his aerials like back air and air and up air are so big and kill so early versus them is very helpful. Uh, and I feel like a lot of people don't use fair into nair or back air with him. Not a lot of people use fair as Ichigo. Yeah, and I think it's very good versus them. Yeah, uh, fair, fair isn't something you would use in every matchup, but right. it's very good versus the floaties. I feel. Uh. I think he's, yeah, yeah. It's funny, Ichigo's mid tier, but I guess he just does really well against low tier players. Even though he's mm -hmm. not that good to begin with. I feel like he's the Ike of the cast, pretty much. Yeah, I'd feel. I feel that way. He could be the noob slayer. The, <laughs> DK is the noob slayer. <laughs> oh, I guess. Oh. <laughs> I, I literally. Every t every newer player or intermediate player I can beat with DK, but if I go against Kilos, maybe. If I go against Kilos, never. Yeah, Kilos does that matchup inside out. Yeah, I can't do it. Out anything, of his man. freaking hand. DK is the noob slayer. Yep. But then um, I don't know. Another unwinnable matchup I'd say is like. Uh, Zero Suit Samus versus Kirby. <laughs> that matchup just sucks, basically. I think Kirby. Kios would disagree with you in that one. What? I think he said before that Kirby does very well in that no. matchup. But... Hold on a second. I'm just the messenger, I'm sorry. I'm shooting the it. messenger, man. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. I think Kirby versus DSS sucks. Kirby can't do anything about side B. Other than, like, I think... full hop. I've been playing a lot of ZSS Falcon with you, and I think that matchup's almost as bad. Uh, no, I think Falcon has an edge. I think Falcon... Yeah, Falcon does bad, but I don't think he does as bad as, like, the Fox yeah, or... No. Uh... Yeah, I wouldn't say Falcon loses as hard as he versus Goku or something, but... Yeah. It's definitely still a hard, hard matchup. T-San, what matchups did, do you think people struggle with when they play against your Zelda? 
Like, you dominate Zelda versus whatever. Um... You literally honestly, can't lose Zelda versus someone. Zelda. If they're not a floaty, it's... It's, like, easily... It feels like it's skewed in my favor. Um... As far as, like, completely unwinnable, um... I feel like I do really good against Marths. Oh, I know that sounds really weird. That's something yeah. that we disagree again. Disagree with. I feel like that sounds really weird, but Marths are dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's the reason I win. I don't think it's a winning matchup, but the way that people play Marth in this game is just stupid. Right. <laughs> like they they go too far in because fair like the range is weird on it. So like people aren't afraid at all to like jump in and like try to approach me while I'm in shield with a fair. Which I can just up smash out of, yeah. and then get a guaranteed up air. So it's like, what are you doing? Um, so I do pretty good against Marths, but as far as like actual matchups, um, I feel like Captain Falcon's a really easy one. A lot of foxes are pretty easy. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh, I um, agree. Anyone who basically doesn't really have like a huge disjoint, no sword, you're pretty much screwed, especially if you're a fast follower. Lloyd. Lloyd is probably the absolute worst matchup. For Zelda? Against Tison. Oh. <laughs> Damn. Lloyd's not a good a... matchup for Zelda, I don't think, but just my my style of play just does not. No, that's not a thing. <laughs> I know you've said that mm. Goku loses to Zelda before. Goku does lose to Zelda. Well, Dude, I've, I tried to play Goku versus Zelda one time against Reimu. I don't think Goku has any answers for what Zelda can do. I don't know, man. He, he doesn't. <laughs> he can't side B. I don't know what to tell you, man. I've played that matchup enough times on my side, and... Why I do you like... lose against my fraudulent Zelda, then? Ooh. How many times have I lost oh, it? Like, twice? Ooh. I, I can at least get like, you down to the last game. stock, and you know that you're better than me. That's so, how you know it's not a good matchup. So my bad. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Salty? Sweet. I'm just saying, I don't know. I feel like the matchup's not that bad. It's I can see bad. Goku losing. The big thing there is that <laughs> Goku has the world's biggest hurt box during his actual, like, oh no, I've been hit animation. So, like, I can throw out fucking, pardon my French, <laughs> fairs and bears all day, and what are you going to do? Absolutely Kyle nothing. Yeah. I mean, you can Kaioken dare, but... I have a small hurt box once you actually hit me with down B, so I can SDI out of it if I'm somehow caught in that situation. And I'm not a fast follower, so I can. I have some chance of recovering, and you have to space it just right. It's not like Fox or Marth or all these other characters where it's like a free dare. You have to like position yourself. Right. So. Yeah. I guess you do. And then. Practice. Yeah, and like on top of that, I can just short hop near and. <laughs> We can we can dance until you're at like ninety percent. <laughs> yeah. Just because it's such I a mean. huge hurt animation, I feel like it, that is another thing that a lot of people sleep on. They don't really take under consideration. Like when your hurt animation is large, that's a big downfall to the character, and a lot of times that's done intentionally. Like you'll notice that floaty characters tend to have smaller hurt animations, and you know the faster falling. Bigger offensive characters tend to have larger hurt boxes, the and the reason, f yeah, like Falcon, Falcons is almost as big as Goku, and the reason for that is because it makes them get comboed harder, yep. um, which in matchups like versus Zelda ends up skewing the matchup in her favor. So, yeah, it doesn't help out Chibi though. Man, <laughs> oh man, Chibi's such a top tier character. In my opinion. <laughs> in my opinion. Wait. Um, Rev said something interesting about Chibi once that, like, he kind of feels like Falco, apparently. Because like, of laser? Or because of, like, I guess. the dare combos? Eh, I've I seen guess. some players try to play it like that, but the thing is, it just does not work the same. All I gotta say is just At wait all. for me, though. <laughs> you just wait. <laughs> I'd say GB yes. actually kind of plays like Fox a little bit, because Nair is really good, Bear is really good, and then, uh, you know, Dare Edgeguard. I'd say GB is like, 
Do you think Chibi's the worst character in the entire cast? No way, right? No way. No. Um... No. I don't know. Because I feel like with SSF2, the top tiers is really the only place that I'm 150% confident. Like, these characters belong in top, like, 8 or so. And then after top 8, everything's just like, oh, this character and this character are kind of even... Oh, this character has slightly better matchups here and worse matchups here. Like I feel like every single time, and th this is an experience I've like noticed being in the BR. Every single person that filled out a tier list, it looks like trash after like eighth place. Everyone's just in a completely different order, unless yeah. they're like copy pasted in someone else's list. That's why everybody has such a different opinion about everybody's tier list. Nobody can really agree. I can see on that one. I feel like some people are still not quite understanding the <laughs> best characters in the game, and that that's why I'm here. But <laughs> I feel like when it comes to basically below top 8, SSF2 is still evolving. There's a lot of characters that are still like sleeper characters that I feel like are really good, but no one has really figured out how to play them the most efficiently. Like I feel like Bomberman... Believe it or not, I know Joey's like really good with Bomberman. I feel like Bomberman still is not quite like there yet. I had someone on Anthers was at like ninth place. Literally, all he did was sit there and throw like P bombs and level <laughs> two bombs, and yeah. maybe a throw out a fair here and there. And he was doing like, I think better than Joey at the time. Wait, who? Better than Joey. Who's doing better than Joey? I don't even remember his username. It was a while back, back um, when Anthers was like new and everyone was playing it. Right. But um, I don't know, dude. I feel like there's a lot of characters like that below top eight that it's just like, uh, eh, eh. Yeah. We'll yeah, put them here thing just is, because Joey's... I think they go here. Sorry. But you know, Joey's actually won quite a few tournaments. Uh, he has quite a few under his belt by just going Bomberman the entire time. Yeah. But yeah, how and many I mean, of the, how many of those can we say that are stacked? Uh, I, think it's just that, honest... but I, I feel like the character is just not at its limit yet and until the character is at its limit you can't really say oh well I think this character should be in this tier because honestly if no one's pushing them as far as they can go like Zelda recently who knows I feel like people were sleeping on Zelda putting her in like mid tier like number 23 and I'm like dude what uh, 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 oh oh <laughs> Uh, what the? Uh, <laughs> well, the thing is, like, Joey's actually won a tournament with Kios in it. Uh, and uh, quite a bit of other top players, you know, the usual Chanch is usually in the tournament, Miracle. He's won those tournaments before. So, his he hasn't, like, just won tournaments where it's just, like, Randy number one, two, three, four, five, six, then Chanch. You know? Yeah. He's won fairly stacked tournaments before. Not like necessarily the most stacked. Like, you know, Lunar is one probably one of the most stacked tournaments of all time, but Joey's Joey's won a good amount of tournaments that are pretty legitimate. I know, and I like don't get me wrong. I Joey is fantastic. He's a great, great, great Bomberman main, but I still feel like he's not at his cap yet. Nope. I feel like yeah. Kios is getting up there where like I don't think there's a zero suit Samus right now that is like a contender for his position. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Where I feel like Randy fundamental Bomberman number two can probably get pretty close to how Joey's performing just out of fundamentals. Yeah, I uh, agree with that. Yeah, and like that that being said, uh chat is definitely right. I feel like Peach is also a sleeper character. She's just so weird. Someone needs to like figure it out because I feel like she could be super abusable. Um, there are no Soras. They just don't exist, so I don't know where to put that character. There are no Black Mages, and I know Black Mage for a fact is a sleeper character. Yoshi no is a one's... sleeper character. Yoshi is a gigantic sleeper character. So, like, there's all these people that sit below, like, top eight, and we just, like, a... BR had no idea what to do with them. I kind of have a rough idea of where they should go, and I know the characters that, just from my experience balancing the game, that just no one ever picked up. No one's showing what, what, what they can do. Um, so until we see, you know, people that are using Wario and aren't constantly complaining that Wario's the worst in the game, <laughs> wah, 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 
Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> and until we see, you know, like, I I feel like there's not a dedicated Chibi Robo main. Nope. I don't know if Chibi Robo is actually the worst in the game, just because everyone has a pocket Chibi Robo. No one is really like, you know, I like Chibi Robo. I'm gonna see how good I can get with them. And that is what basically this game needs so desperately, and that's why I feel like promotion is a big thing that we're missing out on. Because the more people are in this community, the bigger a chance that someone's going to push X character to its limit and find out that X character completely demolishes DK, demolishes Zero Suit Samus, and completely, you know, screw up our understanding of the metagame. Right. So you're saying we, like, we, we need like some low-tier heroes out of the blue... We need some low-tier heroes, and we also need people that aren't going to gentlemen's to SV every single we match can, of every single game. We can, talk about, we can game. talk about the stage list as another time. <laughs> I think Goku is the most that's super all character. I'm gonna, Goku is definitely still a super character. No, but I feel like... The, I, feel, I, I get so heated, man. Because <laughs> I, okay. I ran things like Experiment 1. I did the answer anther stage list intentionally the way that it is Why? so that people would play on stages that they're not comfortable with. And what happens? Everyone's still playing on Smashville. No one under no one seems to really understand <laughs> that excuse, excuse you if you're on a potato computer. You you have my blessing. But <laughs> if you're playing on a stage besides Smashville, do you realize that the boundaries of the stage could potentially make that matchup better or worse. Did you know that that platform existing could potentially skew that matchup? Did you know that having the three platforms on Dracula's castle positioned above your head is going to nerf Marth because he can't up B all day? Did did you does anyone like realize that? Did you know? Does anyone realize that Lloyd is really bad on Dracula's castle and it just so happens to be a counter pick? Why? <laughs> Gee, I wonder. So, um, there, there's a lot of reasons. <laughs> Honestly. Honestly, for, of all the reasons, the most common reason why people don't play on Dracula's Castle is, you know, a, a potato computer. It lags. <laughs> it Quite lags. a bit for a lot of people. And um, I think, uh... The... And I feel for you, but I don't think people playing on potato computers should really define our metagame. All right. Mm -hmm. I think I don't think that we should let. Excuse me, but I don't think we should let Kios dominate <laughs> just because he knows Smashville better than anyone who plays this game. Just because we have people with potato computers, there's a reason that everyone makes a stage list. Even the people who the TOs are still S S V S V S V. They still make that stage list simply because. They know somewhere deep down that if we actually <laughs> used it, it might affect something. I think people just go to SV because they don't want to strike. I think you're like, that's another I point. Feel like, yeah, I feel like that's a big, yeah. big, big reason. They're but I feel lazy. like our, I feel like our understanding of tears are completely, utterly, just trash right now. Just because we. How how can we rank our characters if we only play on one stage when there's another like eight? that could be potentially viable, could potentially, you know, like... The stage list has so much to do with a lot of things, and I feel like that is a big... People only pick it because they're comfortable with it. You need to go out of your comfort zone, and maybe potentially you'll get the other person out of their comfort zone, and whoever practiced the most on that stage is going to end up winning. I think, uh... I think SV is not that big of a problem, because people still go to Dreamland as counter pick. Like, SV is a comfort pick, but they don't go back to it. They go to TOS, Dreamland, Battlefield, in other words. Do me a favor and look so. at um <laughs> look at any smash pick a random Smash Island and when when you get bored, don't do it right now. But pick a random Smash Island and just tally how many people are playing on which stage. You'll find out that there's three <laughs> stages that people use. All the layouts are super similar with a platform that's usually out of the way, kinda like TOS um, or, um, excuse me, TOS or Smashville, and you'll have that one person, that one person that will pick a different stage, and then they're like, oh, dude, uh, mm, 
uh, can we gentlemen to Smashville? And then the next game, they go back to Smashville. It's, like, so ridiculous. Like, that, that is a big pain point for, honestly, honestly, for me. Like, when I ran, when I ran um, Experiment. Experiment 1, yeah. Did you see the nasty-ass comments I got? <laughs> that, was, that was rude as hell. From, from when me. was that? We need, we need that base reality check. I just don't yeah. think TOS with hazards on is a competitive legal stage. You may not. You may not. And I, I, no, I get that right. I'm your number one advocate. I think the biggest reason is the desync. But if oh. you guys actually oh. learned, hang on. If you guys actually learned how that stage works, imagine what it would be like playing against Kios if Kios never practiced on it. Yeah. Imagine yeah, what know. it would be like if you realized that. Oh, while the pil pillars of light are showing up, I have to stay on the ground and shield. So when Kios is, you know, double jump up being and flying around in the air, he's going to get star KO'd. What like, think if? about stuff like that. What if, and I'm just 8-balling here. 8-balling. Uh, what if eight ball. people... Literally no one laughed. <laughs> people, 8-ball, dude. What if people just, just pick the same stage over and over again because they feel like it's the only way to... So that they're better than someone. That's. I think that's just regarding players. Yeah, but what if they? Well, what do you Not, mean by that? I don't know if every player is gonna do that, but I know some are. Look at us. Uh... I mean, let me put it this way. No items, Fox only, Final Destination. Like you'll know. Everyone knows that phrase. It holds absolutely no weight in competitive play, right? Does everyone pick Fox? Does everyone play on Final Destination when you see people playing Smash 4? No one does that. It's a misconception because there's more things that go into skill than raw skill. It's yeah. also like, that. I feel like that's not the best way to phrase that, but a lot of things go into play like matchup knowledge, you know, knowledge and mastery of your own character, knowledge of the stage, knowledge of di mechanics like that like talent is talent in a smash game is so many like components coming together and i feel like a lot of the reason for our stagnant development as of late in the community is because people just they don't give a shit <laughs> damn sorry I, not sorry i but. think uh i think that's kind of true because someone can be really good at chain grabbing on fd but then when you take them to battlefield they just get four stock yeah they don't know how like, to Pretty much platform like, like tech me. <laughs> and then exactly. they just like jump up to the platform, someone text right, oh. then they get back to them. Surprise. Exactly. It's Chibi right? DK. You lost already. <laughs> or are you picking Chibi Robo? And, uh, and yeah, that's a valid point. Chibi Robo is pretty good on Battlefield. Right. Who else is pretty good on Battlefield that's DK. in top 8? In think... top 8, though. Oh. I don't think DK is top 8. Maybe. Well, Chibi Robo is top 8? Huh. No, Chibi oh, Robo okay. is the worst character in the game. <laughs> but think about what happens to top eight when you pick Battlefield. This gets way different. Yeah, like everyone in top eight goes down quite a fair amount, and a lot of the low tier, like Kirby, like I don't know, Sora, they do better. Um, get a lot better. Just, just let, let's just talk about that. Do you guys think? Do you thought? Do you guys think Battlefield is a good stage against Zero Samus? <laughs> Or as Zero Suit Samus. Yeah, because she can't get free dares to get back down to the stage. She can't do down B shenanigans as much, I should say. Wait, um, who dares to get back down to the stage? When you are close to being star KO'd and you DI correctly, it's a good way to avoid dying. Um, Is it really a thing? That, yeah, for sure. Because oh, wow. it comes out faster than like an up air wood for example and it cancels your tumbling animation think of it as it a is, falcon kick. it's a super newbie yeah think of it as falcon kick because like honestly it looks super newbie but it's pretty effective it makes you survive way longer if they can't quite reach you and you have a free down b with invincibility frames if you get threatened so hmm. and uh I thought Zero Suit Samus was on Battlefield was always good for Zero Suit Samus. Um, I mean, it's it definitely it it depends on the style of ZSS that you play against for sure. Cause I, yeah. if you have one of those Zero Suit Samuses that likes to go in heavy, um, that likes to combo you up to the boundaries of the stage, BF is probably not a good pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and on the platforms because Zeus' damage can, you know, up B when you're on a platform, then you're just stuck there to infinity. Yeah. And, like, you definitely don't want to go battlefield against, like, a Marth or, like, a Naruto. That's probably just not a good idea. I think Nar mm -hmm. Naruto's best stage is, like, TOS. TOS is really good, but think about you have a clone on a platform. Oh, yeah, you, yeah. You literally can't jump. Like, damn. Like, damn. Rip. And all of his throws get way better. Clones on TOS are... I don't know, man. I feel like TOS is Battlefield, or not Battlefield. I feel like TOS is Smashville for people who are tired of picking Smashville. It's another yeah. comfort pick. It is, because it's the exact same stage, literally the exact same horizontal width. The boundaries are a little different, and the platform is completely out of the way most of the match, kind of like Smashville. Do you it's think, like, it's, a, do you think it's a neutral or a counter pick? It is definitely, definitely a neutral. Don't get me wrong. Um, it helps out people with bad recoveries, but it doesn't. It's not going to skew gameplay in the way that a typical um, counter pick stage would. Right, like Dreamland. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't even think Dreamland is a good counter pick. With hazards on, it's a counter pick. <laughs> uh, shut up. No, but um, <laughs> Dreamland is like Dreamland is hella basic. It's literally Battlefield with wider platforms. How can you make Battlefield neutral and then call that a counter pick? Cause look at melee. I mean, are we melee though? I mean. Well, the concept of living longer is still applied there. Yeah, it's larger blast zones, so I can say it just benefits like other characters. You can't. I don't. For floaties, I, it's I, not that good. I think for, I have a super, super, super controversial opinion when it comes to that. I feel like it's super, hella, oh super my, dumb. You're in Michigan. You can't say that word. Hella super dumb <laughs> to make a stage a counter pick just because the boundaries are like three pixels wider. Like the fuck? I won't say they're three pixels wider. Wait, hold on. You're the developer here. I can't. I can't say that. I'm exaggerating a little bit. It's yeah. more like ten pixels, but it's only gonna make you survive like an extra six percent. Congratulations. I think that matters a lot. That's not good. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna matter, but it's not gonna make or break a uh, matchup. The same oh. characters are gonna be you know, advantages in that situation. I mean, right. assumably, if it were to be, if it were to be like the same matchup, it would still be played out the same, except right. I suppose... The kill percentages um, would be a little different. I suppose you would have to play neutral and edge guarding a bit longer, I suppose, than if you were to be on, say, Battlefield, but um, the thing is Marth on Battlefield in comparison to Mars on Dreamland is very different. Yeah, because uh, Ford Smash doesn't reach on the platforms. And then uh, Mars up throw, you can like, uh, on Dreamland, if Mars up throws someone, you can instantly tech it, rather than on, on Battlefield, you gotta wait, wait a little bit. And uh, Mars can't reach the top platform as fast on Dreamland. Do you think things like that don't exist in Brawl? What? <laughs> what do you mean? Uh I'm just gonna throw that out there. Think, think about, think about official Smash games. The small, mm -hmm. four pixel difference is gonna definitely make a difference in in those same ways. But is that enough to make it a counter pick? It's a stage with platforms three pixels lower. Yeah. Well, you the thing take is, in consideration platforms, the stage. Uh, on Battlefield, no, I mean on Dreamland. There's mm -hmm. less like awkward angles, so Mario can have a better time recovering than Battlefield. I mean, okay, so I get definitely. I, I guess I cut the line a little, a little higher, because I feel like unless it specifically like does something extremely weird, like like for example, Dracula's Castle, where the platforms are literally doing whatever the hell they want. Right. Or WarioWare. Yeah, like, you can't compare WarioWare. You can't compare, you know, um, you can't compare Dracula's Castle to Battlefield. Like, that's, that's like, night and day, right? Right. The way that you play on those stages is completely, completely altered by that. But if you play on TOS versus Smashville, you know that those are neutrals because you can pretty much play the same way. You, they, the attacks that you use to kill just kill a little later, a little earlier. Um, or if you play on Battlefield versus Dreamland, Overall, besides dumbass Marth F Smash, you can play the same way, right? Right. 
So I don't think mm -hmm. I, I just think it's really dumb. Look especially if you put those stages side by side and say, All right, close your eyes, which one's a counter pick? Because okay. what even what even what and if anything, Battlefield should be the counter pick, right? Because Marth can forward smash through the platforms on Battlefield, but not on Dreamland, right? I think it's just probably has to do with like Battlefield has always been a neutral. Some bull. <laughs> yeah, history <laughs> does melee. say that Battlefield has been neutral in every, almost every single official Smash game to ever exist. Brawl. I'm not saying we should War. completely disregard official Smash games, but I think we're different enough where. We can make that call for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. I'd mm. say all of us, I'd say most of us in the call have a pretty di pretty different idea of what a stage list should be like. t is definitely uh, more liberal. He'd go for Saturn Valley, but I'd, I'm like <laughs> more of the, I'm more of the uh, vanilla Beta when it comes to it. Saturn Valley. <laughs> no, but I, I just feel like... <sighs> There's so much wasted potential because exactly. everyone's complaining. Oh, there's Jank here. Oh, this character's OP. Why don't you pick a different ass stage? <laughs> exactly. Like, what the hell? Man, I hate DK on Battlefield. God. So stop. I wish there was a different stage. Pick 3DS. Oh my God, Fox versus DK on 3DS. Kill me. <laughs> I've played you in that matchup before. Ooh. I don't like D. I like DK, except for versus Fox. D DK has a lot of fun except for versus Fox. If you start, like, now from now on, whenever you start playing DK, I'm just gonna go Fox. And then make you stop playing DK and I'll no, play dude, I'm, else, gonna, so. I'm gonna, like, play my hardest. I'm gonna try really hard, just so I don't lose. You are never gonna win. I'll win much. versus... whatever. Okay. I'll bet my house on that. <laughs> Alright, sick. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um... Yeah, I do think um, t Sun does raise a very interesting point with that. Because, um, personally, my thing is whenever I go to Smashville, because I am one of those players, um, generally it'll be because it's a comfortable pick for me. It's big enough for me to maneuver around. And I don't have, like, too many platforms that get in my way. But there's something there for me to either use to recover or... I could do something cool with. So basically, that would be my only reason for picking Smashville. I don't really consider characters that much or like counter picks or anything with that, but that's something that should be considered in a high level environment. Yeah, so like let's let's go off of that. So now that everyone knows that you're only good on flat stages with platforms out of your way. Now everyone can mm -hmm. counter pick Afro Battlefield, and now you're gonna lose every tournament if people actually start doing that. Like exactly, that's like a fundamental like issue, right? So mm -hmm. I think course of action number one is that everyone who feels the same way as you do, because there is a lot of people that feel that way, should start playing out of their comfort zone and getting used to that. Otherwise, yeah. people can pick the stages that make you uncomfortable and you're going to lose. Right? Yeah, Naruto, mm -hmm. really, Naruto does yeah. really well on platform stages. Take him to FD and watch what happens. Oh. Or, you know, it's just, <laughs> oh. it's just character examples. That example, I can think of a lot. Yeah. I don't know. That, that's just know. my that's my way of thinking. Correct me if I'm wrong, but... Listen... <laughs> Tier no, I don't think you're wrong. Hazards on. Because that is... Uh, well... <laughs> uh, okay, so... Yeah, that is something that um, a lot of players do do, especially new. Mirror chamber yeah. should not be illegal. Mirror with hazards or without? Is... With anything, mirror <laughs> chamber should not be legal. Hazards on mirror chamber is my favorite. That is my favorite <laughs> non-legal stage. It I shouldn't it. be legal. No, but um, it is. It should be legal. I feel like. What? I feel like that platform arrangement is borderline for me. So, I feel like that's a great ass counter pick. I think the boundaries are too small. The I think so. they are, are quite small. About, yes, they are quite small. But so is TOS. I don't see anyone complaining about that. 
Because oh. Tio, Tio was boundaries aren't that like small compared to Mary Chamber. They are. I did research on this. I think seven percent larger. Why did you have to do research on it? You're a dev. Because I ran experiment. Right. That's not research. <laughs> That is research yeah. because after experiment, I went through the data and I'm not even going to argue this with you. <laughs> this worked, this didn't work. So, <laughs> with a 7% stage boundary increase, which is going to let you live maybe with amazing DI 10% extra, what's the problem? It's a great counter pick because what. Think of all the characters that a stage like that affects versus Smashville. Let's use I mean, Smashville pick... as a base. I'd pick, I'd pick Ichigo. that versus Lloyd. <laughs> I'd pick Ichigo and just forward smash everyone at the ledge. Then I'm just oh sin pretty. Then I win like five tournaments in a row. There you go. GG. No one uses Ichigo, so that, that'll that help us out. There you go. Hey, man. I don't know. I just kind of yeah. feel weird about it. Everyone's going to feel weird about it because we've been picking Smashville for seven years. <laughs> I mean, look at, uh, I think it, with PM too, you know. There can be illegal stages just because of their boundaries. I mean, don't get me wrong. After a certain point, for sure. But I don't think any stage in SSF2 is at that point yet. Okay. Yeah, I agree with you on that. We did a good job. Yeah. With PM making Dracula's Castle illegal, even though it's like a really neat-looking stage. For some reason. For some reason. <sighs> for some reason. <laughs> this is not PM. This is Smash yeah. Bros. 2. Dev padding this this game is not PM. Maybe we should talk about that. Uh, otherwise, game, otherwise, you guys be dead. Yeah. Otherwise, we get C and D. I'm checking the email every day, fam. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> speaking of that, this is not PM. What do you think are some of the differences from... I'd say, uh, let's just go not even competitively. What do you, what do you think are some differences between... Smash Flash 2 and say every Smash game ever made, including Realms of Aether. Let me um, <laughs> let, let me just start out by saying everyone explains this in the worst way possible and even makes me? people not want to play the game. All, yeah, even you. What? All right, whatever. Damn. I I also agree with that. Trey, I, shut up. It's sorry true. about it, but I agree with him. When <laughs> when crafting. The terms that we all use today. Think about what would happen if I love PM, I love Melee, and I'm like, what's this Smash Flash 2 all about? Is there L canceling? And then everybody's like, no, no, there's no L canceling. Oh, and you can't wave dash? I'd be like, D uh, uh, then I don't uh, want to play. What the fuck is this? <laughs> so think you know you know that thing that we used to say called auto L canceling, right? We or super anymore, low right? landing like no one says that. So when melee players are like, huh, "This game looks really fast. How do I play it?" and then you give them the link and they're like, w "I keep trying to L cancel and it's not working." You just go, "It's fine if you hit L. It's fine. It's made so that it eats the input for you, but the landing lag is already low." You don't need to. And they'll be like, oh, dude, that's going to save me so much arthritis. That's great. Yeah, but then when you say no L canceling, they're like, eh. Yeah, if you're like no L canceling, they're like, what, what the fuck? Why would I play? Uh, uh, fucking casuals. <laughs> <laughs> what the? <laughs> there is a good amount of advanced techniques in this game to keep you interested in adding depth to it. Think of... Yeah, uh, like Sliding off dash invincibility, cancel. dash up yeah, tilt. Shut, shut up! Don't even talk about that. <laughs> uh, up tilt out of shield. Dash if you up stand tilt. up while you're flying across the stage, you'll have invincibility forever. <laughs> <laughs> this is my favorite Smash game. No, but um, goddamn. Uh, quick dropping, you know. <laughs> quick dropping is very important. Quick dropping is a really cool thing. I feel like we need like tutorial videos. Like, what I'll if? Make some. I, what if every time someone was like, D can you weave this? You were like, no, but there's this really cool thing that you can do called dash canceling. Here's a video of me doing it and showing how it's useful. Yeah. Like, think about how much easier that would make everything. If you just point to someone all the advanced techniques in one video form. Tinyurl.com forward slash SSF2 dash canceling. Let's go. 
or SSF2 mechanics. Make it happen. There's a lot of them that we can do. I guess uh, mm -hmm. for getting people into the community, there's a lot, not like a central hub for all the uh, you know information out there. Cause yeah, you gotta, and like you can talk to top players. You gotta go to McLeod Gaming. It's like a lot of stuff. That's something that I wanted to do, but then you know one of the things that I really want to avoid the devs doing for the community is doing all the work for you. Right. Like, I know that sounds hella hella rude, but this game is not gonna survive if people aren't passionate enough to make a video. Yeah. So, it if every single mechanic video that I show off, if every single link to anthers I give you, et cetera, et cetera, is hosted on the cloud gaming official. It looks like no one plays the game and the devs are low life. Like, yeah. So there's a lot of combo videos, but not a lot of uh, guides. Yeah. I personally think that um, if you were to like, you know, like there's some stuff that we all already know how to do basically. But um, if we were to have something like uh, some sort of video to show off advanced text, but we were still leaving out like some of the more like either stuff that's not as well known or right. <laughs> like let's say how many people in the last flashcast, I'll bring that up. Um, we we had like we had Soldier Sunday saying that. Uh, basically, he had discovered a lot of stuff before other people knew about it. <laughs> but I feel like that's, that's pretty much true. True or not. Rip. It's pretty true much or true. not. I'm he didn't true. tell anyone. <laughs> anyway. True or not, that's basically, I feel like, what should happen here. Like, we can have these videos that show off the text. We can, but we don't have to feed everyone, like, we don't have to spoon feed everyone, you know? And that's really not, yeah, exactly. You don't want it to be, like, you don't want it to be, uh, if no one's passionate enough to make a video for it, then how the hell is the game going to survive? Exactly. Right. Yeah. Uh, Mars. Yeah. When you were learning uh, Zero Suit Samus in Smash 4, did you encounter any problems with that, like, learning it? Or was the information, like, already out there? I, I can't, what do you mean, like, information? Uh, how did you go about learning to be... I don't, learning how to play Smash 4 competitively. I, I just played it a lot. That, that's really all there is to it. I just played it a lot. See what works, what doesn't. Knowing like the timing for when you can do things. Right. And that's really all there is to it. Just playing a lot. <laughs> I feel like Smash 4 is a ton of fundamentals. Honestly, uh... it's not... I don't think it's mechanic heavy. I really don't. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but for a game like SSF 2 with all this extra fluff that you kind of have to learn. Um, I feel like Smash 4 styled character AT videos would be super helpful. Like, imagine, th think about that vectoring video that came out and sent, like, the whole community into a panic. I, do you guys follow Smash 4? I feel like you don't. I, yeah, I, know about I remember vectoring. that video. I knew about okay. that. Yeah, knew. there was mm -hmm. literally every, every little thing that they discover, even if it's just pressing A out of knockback to avoid going into the crash animation. Oh, I know about that, yeah. It like. gets it gets its all it gets a whole video dedicated to it. It gets commentary over it. It gets shared onto Reddit. It gets shared onto all these Twitter accounts. All these Twitch accounts immediately start playing with it on live stream. When something gets discovered in SSF two it's just like, oh, Okay, I guess I'll play online mode a couple times. <laughs> like, those... no, no one's going to learn from that. Sorry. Mm -hmm. It's those, like, little things that really help, like, Smash 4 expand. Yeah, like, perfect uh, perfect pivoting is a good example, I guess. It's the smallest uh, and, like, most situational thing, but, like, it helps, like, a lot. It helps a lot, and also, even before people found actual uses for it, think about how many people were constantly practicing it, constantly posting about it. It was all over the front page of Smash Bros. Reddit. Like, these things just don't happen to SSF2, and you got a question, like, why? I think the Reddit just hates Smash Flash 2. No, I think Smash Flash 2 just doesn't go on the Reddit. I think uh, both. There's been, like, <laughs> I think there's been, like, I looked at it, 
there's been a handful of posts to the Reddit for Smash Flash 2, and they've all gotten, I'd say, 10 of votes or something like that. Cool. There have been successful ones, There's but been the, only, successful the ones. only time you're going to have a successful one is if, one, it appeals to Smash 4 players, or two, it appeals to PM players. No what? one between. And oh, the oh. reason for that is because no one from Smash Flash goes on the Reddit. If you're not frequenting the Reddit, if you're not constantly submitting stuff, constantly looking for other Smash Flash content, it's going to be like it is now where you click on Smash Flash 2 in the sidebar and you have to go back four pages to get one post. Just because there's nothing being submitted, there's no one upvoting. Oh, that's how that sidebar thing works? Yeah, it filters the stuff <laughs> out from the current page. So, like, if there's no right. SSF2 for four pages, you still have four blank pages. I, didn't I was know. wondering why I clicked on it and, like, nothing shows up. <laughs> because there's nothing to begin with. <laughs> and I, I honestly don't think SSF2 content is hated. Uh, because I posted my own videos on Reddit before, well, one, and on the first day I got Reddit gold. So uh, I feel yeah. like I feel like if it's good, not... it gets attention, but it has to either appeal to other people, or for I don't know how this would even be a thing, but we have to get Slack on board, we have to get IRC or what's left of it on board, we have to get Skype on board, and we need to use the Smash Bros subreddit. And in the process mm -hmm. of doing so, not only will it make our community smarter and more informed and more excited about new things coming, it will also, in the process, since it's a shared Reddit, I'm sorry, shared subreddit, it will promote SSF2 to people that don't know about it yet. It's a win-win-win. And I think, like, uh, another thing that we can probably say is that tournament videos don't get publicized. Everybody Ooh. posts replays, but none of them... Not a lot of uh, YouTube uploads for tournaments. I think people can look at a lot of tournaments to get better. I think a lot of the mm -hmm. reason for that is just that there's no watchability if there's no commentary. And whenever there is commentary, it doesn't get saved. Yeah. And, uh, uh, oh, sorry, you, go on. Nah, nah, mine's kind of a switch topic. You can go. Oh, okay. Well, what I was going to say is a lot, like, a lot of commentary is very... Um, I guess the best way I could put it is young. For this community, a lot of people don't really know what to say. Uh, it's it's like, you know, in the older days of Smash, you know, Melee, where random people would go up and just commentate random things. Uh, I feel like we're kind of at that stage where some people, like, the people that are not here kind of just say whatever when they're commentating a match. Um, and yeah... That's pretty and much that's it. when there yeah. is commentary, you know? Yeah. yeah, it's not very often at all. I can't think of that's... a lot of sets that I watch that have good commentary and or commentary at all. I don't think I I've think watched the, the set with commentary. Yeah, and, like, I think the big thing is, like, the reason that there's no commentary is because 99.999% of our tournaments and events are online-based. Like, you'll see something like, oh, my goodness, imagine that. It's Dev Sanction, Apex where we have commentary the entire time. Sometimes it's okay. A lot of times it's rem moaning. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> the stuff that was commentated over got people excited, got people educated, got right to the point, right? So has anyone, like, even put any thought into going to their local Smash club, Smash event, and bringing SSF2? No. And that would be a great, great, great way to not only get commentary and get new people playing, but it would also kind of advance the community and advance the metagame. Right. We're super grassroots, and think of how Melee exploded. It was because people were dedicated. People took the time out of their day to make that game successful. And... If no one feels that strongly about SSF2 after beta, SSF2 pretty much has no future. Right. Uh, I hear people say this all the time. It's just that non-native controller support really is killing SSF2. But that's not our fault. That really has to do with the uh, Flash, right? It's not completely our fault. Yeah, so like Flash doesn't support it. But if you'll notice, no one goes, um, hey, before you plug your controller in, 
There's not native controller support when you're at an Apex event or you're at SmashCon. No, no one is saying that to them. They plug in their controller and they play the game. They don't even know. Yeah. Everyone whines about that mm -hmm. once they notice it, but... <clears throat> well, I'm sorry, not once they notice it, but once someone tells them about it, but... In all actuality, it makes absolutely no difference if you're configured correctly and there's enough guides out there where it's not... Yeah, there's it's a not even an obstacle. Yeah. Uh, for everybody listening, the best way... For, for me, the best way to play SF200 controller is you get an adapter. Uh, I usually prefer May Flashes. And then you plug it in. The best program is x because I think x is the simplest one. Then, For sure. Yeah. And it can do the most. Right. Mm -hmm. Somebody's flies in the I background. also made... It's the dog. Sorry. Someone's dog. <laughs> that was me, sorry. Somebody's bungalow. I also made my flies. stomach. Anyway. Like yeah. a while back, I made like an entire guide on how to set up x there as well. Yeah. That's viewable on the forums. If you yeah, have and there's if, like four videos. Yeah, there's Taylor Nickty's video, there is your dad's video, there's Afro's, and then I guess there's another one. Your dad. Mm -hmm. Your dad. Your dad. Your dad. Your dad. Dude. No excuse. <laughs> your dead, kid. Your dead. <laughs> so, so one of the questions I had for like anyone to answer is like, what do you think the biggest turnoff for someone that would want to get into Smash Bros. Two is? Uh, do you all want to say this? Three, two, one. Is, is it going to be a one-way I'm about to answer? drop the bomb. <laughs> I'm about to dog everyone out. Uh, anime characters. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was going to say that, yeah. Same. Uh, oh, like uh, the fact um, that... I, oh, the fact it's that it's one of the three things. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to say the negative well, aspects of the oh, community. Okay, are we talking about people... Uh, uh. Shot. <laughs> Because, to be completely <laughs> yeah. honest, okay. I can't name how many people got into Smash Flash from when we were added to the um, to Smash Ladder, and then immediately after hearing how ignorant some people are about losing matches, just never played it again. Yeah, and it, I think it's funny because I think most people online hate the anime characters, but everyone that's played the anime characters are big fans of it, especially people yeah. that have played, or like, melee veterans, and then they switch over here, and they're like, I love Goku, I love Ichigo, they're so fun. I feel like that's yeah. the number one thing that people, like, immediately see, but, like, the people who, we can talk past that, and the people who actually play the game a couple of times, I feel like the, the next obstacle that they get hit by is, once they start playing online, it's John after John after John. Right, this game is so mm -hmm. jank, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, like, that is, not only is that, I, I take personal offense to that, because... In a lot of cases, it's not even true. But I also think that if someone is constantly complaining about how jank the game is, eventually you're just going to go, all right, well, maybe this game actually is jank because literally everyone is saying that. Yeah, even top players before had said how jank this game is. For example, you know, Gorilla, Kilos, etc. Yeah, so yeah. like... Just, I, I think the term that comes to mind for everyone is just get good. If you're losing, in some situations, it could be due to jankness, but everything for everything that's jank, there's a way to counteract it. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, even even a move with super armor the entire time can be grabbed, right? <laughs> exactly. And I mean, a lot of the Johns come from lag, and, you know, the best solution for that is making an offline scene. Right. I mean, look at but, California. Yeah. California has like 15 people playing the game. Genesis 3. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. and <laughs> Mich Michigan has a lot of people playing the game. Um, we I brought it to Big House one year, and a lot of people loved it. And a lot of those people are on Smash Ladder playing it every day now, even though it's two years later. I feel like Smash Flash, for like a lot of people, like random people... It's it's like one of those better games to spectate rather than play, just because people don't want to put in the time. I think Smash Bros. Two is a fun game to watch. Yeah, it that's is. What I think just because it's Smash Bros. Two. I don't know, man. Uh, yeah. 
not a lot of people are putting the time into it, I guess, because, like, a combination of things. No information. Nobody's playing my character, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Yeah. A lot, a lot of matches are really fun to watch, especially ones that you don't see. I personally like watching Goku Ichigo a lot, uh, even though there's, like, maybe three matches of it to ever exist. But, um... I think that's a pretty fun matchup to watch. Just the crazy things that happen in that matchup. Uh, I feel like if there's no Lloyd in the game, <laughs> if there's no Lloyd in the game, it's not only fun to watch, but I feel like it's fun to play too. Like some of the sh some of the stuff you can pull off in SSF2. <laughs> some, some, some of the some of the stuff uh, <laughs> that you can pull off in SSF2 you never see happening in an official Smash game. Zero deaths come by so easily, and I feel like we're so desensitized to that because we've been around so long, but think about someone who's been playing Melee and has to put in, like, the world's longest input string in order to get a 30% combo. Right. Or someone that's used to Street Fighter, even. What, what, what kind of stuff do you have to do in order to get a kill in that game? You gotta... proper spacing, man. Cry you gotta punishes. turn around and roll on top of your controller in order to do one special move. <laughs> Quarter circle yeah. forward isn't that bad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look at Ryu in Smash Four. You know, it's bridging the. It's you know, bridging the two worlds. I don't, I don't know. I just feel like. <laughs> I feel like the. I guess, I'm supposed to feel this way because I helped plan this out. But SSF2 is <laughs> designed to be. Um, it's designed to be the perfect either introductory smash game or break from your main smash game so it's meant to be supplementary so the people who play brawl can literally open up ssf2 and do a 60 percent combo no problem it's it's because it doesn't require it requires fundamentals above all a person who plays melee can pick up ssf2 and do a 60 percent combo just as good as someone who plays brawl it's 150% fundamentals and like hmm, 10 10% character now no no I shouldn't say that <laughs> like 40% character knowledge and like 10% like luck no 10% port priority 20% concentrated power of will <laughs> really 10% <laughs> I don't know. That's something that really excites me, though. Anyone can pick up SSF2 and be good at it after a reasonable amount of time. Right. Look at Mars, the up-and-comer. What up? <laughs> the up. He got himself. Local Smash 4 champion. Now he's going to pick up SSF2 and be a god. And it's going to take some time. But... It's going to take some time. <laughs> and Maybe. a new laptop. Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> Even though Mars has been playing Smash 4, he's still getting rock crocked in Smash Flash 2. It's going to take him some time, but he's going to start winning soon, I'd say. He already did. He already did. Once. He already beat Afro. Uh, yeah. Oh, there you go. There I, you beat go. His, I beat his Jigglypuff. Already better oh, than me. With uh, Black Mage, be proud. Oh, I'm so proud. Proud boys. <laughs> Who even the wins God. Black Mage Jigs? Is that a bad matchup? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no one plays it. <laughs> yeah, that's those are two characters that no one uses. So it's I, like the anime characters <laughs> versus each other. I don't know what the matchup is. It's like is. Chaunch versus Axe ending. Like, and that never happened. <laughs> Wait, no, it has. And Chaunch really? lost that. What? Chaunch lost. Yeah, okay. and Chaunch was not happy at all in that match. Black Mage wins, <laughs> I guess. Does yeah, he was complaining about Black Mage. Anyone even know Black Mage matchups? Like, what's a good matchup, a bad matchup? A good matchup for Black Mage? Uh, Sora? No, I can't even say Sora. Yeah, 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 for sure. Really? Definitely Sora. I think I think Black Mage beats Marth to an extent. I think Black Mage honestly just beats characters that are not um, disjointed. Kind of like Zelda. Black Mage is one of the like, slower characters that punishes being stupid. Yeah. He's yeah. To be honest, uh, Lo Lloyd is the noob slayer, though. Everyone's got, the noob I slayer. I got slaughtered. He all time. He all tried to time me out. I think it was Afro. Uh, that, that, that was proto. That was proto. There's a special place in hell for people like you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. You were the one who mentioned. Hey, I timed this guy I, out once. I I'm mentioned like, it. Oh. Not enough circles in hell for proto. <laughs> 
Yeah, I have done a lot of things in my life. I've done a lot. BM beats DK? What? Uh, last I heard... Um, I would... I, I think that that could be a possibility. Uh, it I could feel like... Possible. I don't even play the game, kind of, but, like, it, the way it looks, I feel like, uh, Black Mage does really well against, like, fat characters like DK. And, yeah, because, like, I can think of how is gonna DK... How is DK gonna do with Meteor? Yeah, he uh, definitely does have a hard time. And then, how is DK gonna deal with Side V? He can't, like, you know, punish it very well, besides detail, so... Yeah. Although, if Black Mage is above DK and he just starts up tilting... Oh yeah, it's over. It's, comes, it's over. It becomes a bit of a problem from there, because Black Mage doesn't really have good tools to get him back to the ground. I mean, he could there, but it usually... Literally, gets... Meteor. What? Yeah, just follow the Meteor. Just Meteor and then follow it. Oh. Yes. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Get it That's together. still a valid point, though, because it has a lot of start out. True, so you gotta, like, actually have the time. And, yeah. I don't know, that's a crazy matchup. We See, this is another thing. Not a lot of information about matchups. Nobody's really you. done an extensive conversation about it. There, Wasn't there, I can um... um there, people made matchup charts, but, you know, there's no one really talks about the matchups a lot. I can yeah. tell you in Slack, I have seen multiple people be like, Hey guys, you know this match? What is this? I've seen it like multiple times, and like literally 50% of like the characters are missing in terms of matchups. It's like not available. There, are, there are a lot of unexplored match unexplored matchups in this game that yeah. people just have no idea about. Like Marth Naruto, who wins Marth Naruto? Mm, I don't. Probably <laughs> Marth, but I don't I know. Think wins um, it. I would yeah, say Marth I, wins I think that. that's one of the few situations where. Naruto can deal with a character with disjoints. Because I've played a lot of uh, spammy clones, spammy clone Naruto's. Marth doesn't have a good time dealing with it. Because yeah. he, ha he has to find the time to detilt the up clone, and while he's doing that, Naruto's in the air doing aerial down Bs, and then he's throwing side Bs. I think Dash Attack is very good versus Marth with yeah. Naruto. Uh, if you know how to combo well with Naruto and follow up tech chases after a knockdown, I think it's a very rough matchup for Marth. You can play it both aggressive and defensive, or zoning, I suppose. Right. Not necessarily de defensive. But, um, yeah, I think Naruto does fairly well in that matchup. I'd have to play it more. Man, we can make an entire podcast just discussing matchups, huh? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. That would take, like, five hours. Yeah, the entire ah, matchup yeah. encyclopedia. <laughs> uh, we would just discuss each matchup. It's like, uh... oh my god! All right, Mario guys. DK, <laughs> Mega D Man DK versus it. Jigglypuff. Uh, 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 that's <laughs> not really a thing, but I'm pretty sure it'd be Mega Man. Really, Jigglypuff. <laughs> I honestly think Mega Man's gonna yeah. just because no, yeah, people don't uh, know his uh, down smash is so strong. Mega Man don't can even... like up tilt. <laughs> that, let's not even worry about down smash and up tilt. Let's just he'll do down B and he's gonna switch to block. What are you gonna Brick. do? <laughs> you know, just, His gonna, back air is also very strong. He's gonna go down, all the way to I the right side. Of the yeah, brick, <laughs> brick forever. What can right. Jigs do? Oh my God, Br brick versus Jigs. The match. <laughs> brick versus. Jigs. <laughs> <laughs> Smashing crash versus Jigs. Oh my God. <laughs> that sounds like a rough nightmare, dude. Go to the right side of Smashville and cry, and that's how you, that's how you <laughs> yeah. win. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't think back air beats out uh, Brick, does it? I think Brick is, gonna, Brick is gonna force Jigs to the ground, because Jigs has to like power shield and shield it. Yeah, yeah. and, yeah, and Jigglypuff being it. on the ground is just trash. Yeah. They're immediately screwed. Side B. Yeah. <laughs> so... does, does it still have good shield damage? Who? Uh, Jig side B. Um, not as good as Smash Four. Yo. Yeah, not nearly as good. We gotta fix that. No. <laughs> Actually, probably. Good point. Good to be honest. So just uh, open I, this. And... I feel like <laughs> what would what would be a cool addition is moves that have like a bunch of shield damage for no reason. Mars yeah. Dev, what? 
Let's Marth. go. <laughs> there are a couple. I mean, like, Marth neutral special still has a lot of damage. And I think we souped up a lot of Bowser's attacks um, and a lot of Donkey Kong's attacks are, mm -hmm. I think, higher than normal in 9B. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's uh, interesting because I've only seen... Buff uh, DK? DK is like mid-tier, of course. <laughs> Bring back uh, pre-patch up B. The helicopter. Oh, yes. The the abyss. Let's go. The abyss. Let's, let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, what was I going to say? Oh, I've only witnessed about two shield breaks in my entire SSF2 career. I got Were they both up. from you? Were they both from you? Let me ask that question. Oh, wait, no, no, no. three. I broke no shield, accidentally got a shield <laughs> broke, and then I got my shield broke. Oh. Yeah. When Axe got like... a shield broken by Trevisi, that was the funniest thing. <laughs> Just him to too much. Like, you have to be really screwing up to get your shield broken in SSF2 because yeah, your shield yeah. stun is not high enough where it would be a problem with like having like shield break combos and at the same time shield like deterioration is also not high enough. Yeah. So should they be made higher? How's shield process. regeneration? You don't even have to worry about regeneration because the shield already has so much HP. By the time it gets down there, you're probably regenerated a full shield. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I probably. I mean, it, uh, I'm the next off, dad. Off, <laughs> defense is so weak in SSF2. I don't. I don't feel like it's a problem. I don't. Uh, defense is pretty weak, yeah. But I think that's just the player's fault. Because there are ways to get around know. it. Because you have. Because you have a lot of things in SF2 that are different regarding defense. Invincibility while sliding, up to a lot of shield, rolling rolling for some characters is pretty good. I think defense is really weird for SF2. I feel like, yeah, that's a valid point. Rolls are kind of OP. Not for oh, uh, some characters. I, I, nobody has even... I, I don't want to say this out loud because now people are going to abuse it, but Kirby's roll <laughs> is fucking stupid. Look at Jigs' roll. I think don't, Warrior's let, roll is really good. Let's set aside Jigglypuff for a second. Kirby is considered one of the worst characters in the game right now, right? All right. For no reason. Mm -hmm. No reason. I'm going to need... <laughs> I'm gonna need someone to pick up Kirby and do nothing but roll forward smash and up B. <laughs> I got you, fam. We had some. We had a Sora already do that, though. We had we had five <laughs> Kirby players already do that. I mean, Kirby. Sora Sora's roll is okay. Sora's roll is okay. Kirby's goes one third of Smashville. God damn. God damn. And so, it's gonna be fast, yeah. Yeah, and the frame data is a lot slower than it's supposed to be. Kirby's uh, regular getup is weird. You can't jab reset Kirby reliably. But Donkey I think that's Kong's fixed. tech is like 20 frames shorter than it should be. <laughs> yeah, I think that's fixed. That is definitely fixed in beta. In beta. Yeah. So, I don't know. Yeah. Black Mage's role is really good as well. No. <laughs> no, I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> no. I think he has a good role. I haven't really rolled. I don't even game. know what his role. I think yeah, I his role hit. goes really far. I think it's kind of slow, isn't it? It's pretty fast compared to like Marth Falcon. I rolled like its four speed times. is average, but like the distance is pretty good on it. Dude, I love DK's For role. DM. You grab in front of him, and it still grabs if he's behind you. <laughs> The greatest of all time. I think uh, I think DK's tech roll is probably way too good. DK I don't tech, know. I don't DK really has, see like, it being a tech. problem. Honestly, DK. Like, I know. I know it can be annoying, but it's annoying because you screwed up. It's not annoying because it's overpowered. Right. I think DK yeah. just has a really fast tech roll. So I know tails. Rolls. Tails wins beta. Tails probably has the fastest tech roll. I'd say. Uh, oh, I think I'm pretty sure DK's is the fastest in the game. Okay. I think uh, Black Mage has a decent sidestep or spot dodge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who's the best spot dodge in this game? Um, Can you call off the top of your head? I only recall I players who spot, no one dodge spot dodges. dodges. <laughs> and, like, honestly, the only players that I recall that have spot dodge versus me in the past is, like, Kios. 
Yeah, maybe once or twice, and that was <laughs> no, it. No, wait, what? Every oh. match he has spot dodges. I don't know, spot dude. He, like, plays ZSS, so I don't know. I never maybe noticed. DK? Yeah, I've no. seen DK spot dodge. I mean, it DK looks spot dodge is alright. I mean, <laughs> I love the way it looks, don't get me wrong. Yeah, it's my favorite like, like face. My, fa my favorite spot dodge. Bowser's Jesus. is up there, though. <laughs> Bowser's oh. is up oh. there. Leaks! Future uh -huh. content. You guys have seen it. Have you guys seen it before? In like a the de the reveal? I don't know. No. I don't remember. No, they never. No. <laughs> it's funny. It's the it's the best. How what? Greatest of all time. Oh. Other than that, <laughs> yeah, defense for SSF two. It's not a. Uh, it's not too. It's not too uh traditional. I'd say you have to you have to uh -oh. utilize the mechanics a bit more. I'm not saying that defense is bad in SSF2 per se. I feel like that's that statement is wrong. But I feel like offense is so good that defense is not really particularly a problem. Yeah, right. I can see that. Uh, I'm going to make my black mage just stop. Meteor and pivot grabs. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait. Hey. Sounds like a good idea. Oh, yeah. You know, there's a lot of other pivots you can do, Mars, besides pivot no, grabs. No, no, just pivot grabs. You got pivot jab, you got pivot nah. up tilt. That's pivot too easy. Anything. It's too easy. Pivot down wants. tilt. You know what? Actually, I feel like that's one thing I really like about SSF2, that you can do a standing grab in the opposite direction without wasting a frame. Mm. Super awkward mechanic. Like, when you think about it, it sounds like it's nothing, but... It is so helpful with like people that have good grabs. Cause in official Smash games, if you want to do a pivot grab, you gotta run first. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I see. Hmm. It's I a think, pretty good mechanic. What do you think, like, like the game's cast itself? Do you think there's a good balance of like rush down characters, zoning characters, campy characters? Uh, all the zoning characters, I'd say. Don't do I don't, very well. I don't think we even have like, like a, a specific design zoning character. Yeah. Well, wouldn't Mega Man was Mar supposed to be one, but no one plays him that way. Yeah. Mega Man could be a zoner. Then Mega Man's like low tier or mid tier. I feel I, like no one wants to play the zoning characters. Nah. Not because um, in like Flash. Could Bomberman count maybe? I, I don't uh, think he's a zoner. Bomberman is rushed down. He can be played as a zoner, but not primarily. Nah. Uh, I've seen this a lot. Goku is a zoner. <laughs> I hope could day. be. Yeah, I've Goku seen it with be, my if own bad, two eyes. Kid. I've seen the legends. Uh, I'd say Zero Suit Samus is a zoning character. Can be a zoning character, even though she's mm. not particularly designed to be that way. I don't yeah, think you know she's... what? She was, she was designed that way. Oh. Zero Suit Samus doesn't. I don't know if you noticed this, but she's not particularly good at rushdown. No, she's not. I don't think she's like the best at that. I think yeah, she I've always plays her it. super aggro, but like, I don't think anyone else could get away with that. If you shield fair, all they have is like down tilt or grab, and then you can just spot dodge both and punish it. Not even. You could just straight up grab her out of fair because yeah. the second hit is so slow. Rush down, rush down ZSS. I don't know, man. She doesn't have actual combos unless they're from up B or down smash or B. Like, that's literally her right. only combo starter moves, and she has no combo continuer moves. Yeah, but I think she just does like... very well against, like, her combos seem pretty much endless against Falcon or Fox. I mean, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. she, she just continues and continues. So yeah, stage. I played that matchup. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I I feel like I feel like that's just Kios being really good. <laughs> Probably. I, yeah. Or just I think everything is super potential. hella di dependent with Zero Suit Samus. She doesn't have anything guaranteed unless it's from those three moves I listed. I think D Detail can combo a bit, and I know I played Soldier in Falcon ZSS quite a bit for some time now. I think. And I mean, think about it though. If you're not doing down smash and you're not doing neutral special, what guaranteed combos do you have? Yeah, it's a lot of tech chasing with. Uh, it's entirely Sadie. even. She yeah, wasn't designed to be a combo character. She can be if you're just really good. 
And I feel like that holds true for pretty much any character we design as a zoning character because if they were horrible at combos, they wouldn't be an SSF2 character. Yeah. I, like, I look, can agree with look that. at Mega Man even. Mega Man can combo. He wasn't designed to combo. You can tell that because none of his aerials really flow into each other. Yeah, and they have like massive landing lag. They have massive landing lag, but if you chase them correctly, you can still make them combo. You can do fair into, like, if they DI in, fair into fair into up B reverse bear. Yeah, like well, like, you you look at a character designed to combo, like Falcon, Fox. like Fox, you can, like, do shit, and it will just work. <laughs> That's what, you know what, I've seen a lot of more complete, I've seen a lot more people complaining about Fox as, uh, Recently. As time went on, yeah. As time went on, it slowly became from, "Wow, you play Fox," and it's now just, "Oh, <laughs> you Fox. play Fox." I mean, uh, <laughs> oh, that's no. a byproduct of this community because if you think about it, what about Fox's OP? Bear, because <laughs> everybody says Bear is OP. Everyone says oh, Bear is okay. OP. And what about yeah. Fox is actually OP? A lot of people say Shine is pretty like. Good, but I don't, for like strange I mean, reasons. Because like, they I mean, say like shine, shine to grab. I mean, people don't like that shine, like shine on hit into grab. But I don't think shine is like. I don't even think shine is really that good. Shine is really good. Well, shine like, is pretty good. It's entirely, entirely, not only just skill based, but. I mean, if if you DI it in unconventional ways, or, oh, God forbid, SDI the move. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> like, you can, throw, you can throw a good fox off, even. <clears throat> the thing is, I feel like a lot of people don't know how to edge guard very well yet. Uh, people have trouble, when fox is off stage, people just get hit by the fire fox and, you know... Fox is back on stage. The thing and... about edge guarding is that you just stay on stage and you hit with a bear. Or anything that sends them off stage. Look at Ichigo. Ichigo versus Fox is a good example. Stay on stage and just forward smash. Or grab ledge and bear. Yeah. Well, I and mean, I feel like... so that's, that's more of a design choice. So if you think about it, like, think of SSF2's ledges. What about them is different? Uh, uh, you don't get invincibility when you pop off of them. And ledge jumping doesn't have an animation. And you get that, oh, that's like the biggest difference, I think. There's no ledge jump animation. And people say the buffer timings are weird, but I don't know. That's just a player. So thing. let's go back to ledge invincibility. And okay. they're not being really ledge snapping unless you're doing a special move. Mm -hmm. If I don't have invincibility... I don't have to worry about... I'm sorry. If I don't have invincibility, I have everything to worry about as soon as I grab that ledge. Because the second I let go, or within a couple of seconds, I can be hit by a down tilt. I can be hit by a down air. They can jump off and down air me. They can fare me. I'm wide open, right? The ledge is more unsafe in SSF2 than it is in any other game. And I like that. It lets, you do abuse, it lets you abuse the corner even more, and that shows that the character, or the player with proper fundamentals, is the better one. Right, and... Because there's no infinite ledge dash. There, it also oh, completely, completely trashes the idea of planking, which was the number one concern at the time, because you got to remember that the time when we overhauled all these... Um, all these mechanics is when Brawl was super prevalent. This was before Smash 4 was even a thing. So these were designed as plinking proof ledges. Yeah. Smash 4 um, tried to solve the problem, but they did ledge trumping and. Uh, ledge uh, trumping is the dumbest shit. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> I swear Double to God, trumping. the reason I don't play Smash 4 anymore is because of guaranteed ledge trump follow ups. That is the dumbest shit. You can not get hit by ledge jumps. If you, yeah, for sure. If you, like, um, if you buffer at the earliest possible frame or some shit, you can avoid ledge trump guaranteed combos. But I, I was, 
I was fucking. I didn't make it out of pools in Smash Four, and I was just like, all right, fuck oh, this, because poor... all these niggas <laughs> would do is ledge Trump beer. Uh, yeah, with Mario. I, I feel like at like a really high level, it just adds a whole nother like level to mind games at that specific scenario. I don't know. I feel like I feel like high level Smash Four is who can force. I feel like if you grab the ledge, you're basically screwed if you aren't buffering already. So it can well, be like well, a game no, of then, chicken? Then it, can, then it can be a bait, because Zero Suit has a tether trump, which is even faster than a regular trump, and I can immediately yeah. act out of it. So either I can do that, and then, like, I would assume that you react with, like, a roll onto stage, or a get-up attack, so you don't get trumped, and then I'll just punish it. Or if you, like, are, you don't see it coming, I can just back air you. I guess it's different for tether cut characters, but oh, uh, Zero, Suit's, Zero Suit's the only one that can do it. <laughs> I play deal. Villager just to put that into into yeah. perspective. So I practiced on um, what did I practice against? I practiced against pre patch Luigi. Got hella good because I was expecting everyone to play Luigi, and Sheik Ledge Trump Bear was some bullshit. <laughs> But that's besides the point. I feel like ledge trumping is just, it's a really inelegant way yeah. to solve the problem. And, and PM, I, PM hmm? tried to solve the problem as well, but like, after you ledge grab three times invincibility's up, and that seems really arbitrary. Why three? Yeah. Why not two? I was going to say, yeah, that's something that we definitely, even before PM even announced that, because some brawl mods had tried that before, way before PM was even like a fucking glimmer in Shanus' eye. A um, couple Brawl mods tried that, and it it just it doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's such a rando number. Yeah. Why three? Like, you'll notice that, yeah, and, like, you'll notice that even Tether Grabs a la Brawl, remember Tether Grabs were limited to a certain number? Yeah. yeah. That was an arbitrary number. I just, I, I think this is the most elegant way to solve the problem. Smash 4 did too, and then you run out of invincibility. Yeah, and I mean, it has it has its downsides, don't get me wrong. It kind of does make edge guarding a little too easy a lot of the time, but it also motivates you to go off the stage and chase them. Wait, for SF2? Yeah. Oh. I'd say edge guarding, uh, edge guarding is pretty difficult in regards to just the characters. The engine, I'd say edge guarding is easy. The characters, no. Edge Guardians DSS. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I'd rather take like a calculus. Might, my today. opinion might be skewed because I I use Zelda, so all this nigga does is down tilt. Yeah. But <laughs> but if I go off stage as Falcon versus DSS and I go for like a dare and I try to recover, it's over. Yeah, you don't want to try and edge guard unsafely against another character. That's not good. I either. mean, if it was easy, everyone would do it. And honestly. A lot of people can't do it. <laughs> Not many people are very good at edge guarding at the moment, I and even the top players aren't exactly adept at doing so yeah, themselves. Ledge grabbing is just uh, people need to practice getting consistent with it. Because even I mess up sometimes. When ledge grabbing seems like the is the best option some, sometimes. Like when Marth in in Marth dittos, it's like so important because the Marth's recovering under the stage, but the other Marth who doesn't know how to ledge grab. They're detailing and they're F-smashing, trying to catch the Marth missing the sweet spot. But when, they can just ledge grab. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, this will be, it'll be more important in beta, because all the um, recoveries have landing, landing lag. lag. So you're going to want to grab the ledge, which is going to make people want to edge guard you, and that will help kind of, I guess... Solve some of the issues, but R. I. P. Chic. <laughs> a lot of the it's reason over. why it is the way it is, though, is to be planking proof because y'all want to talk about jank. <laughs> let's talk about let's, well. let's have a conversation <laughs> about plank. Basically, well, <laughs> nah, man, I don't know. I don't know. It's a very interesting topic. Uh, if you're looking to get into this game, I think the mo the things that you'd have to look out for is probably if you come from brawl, it's going to be pretty simple because you already know how to ledge grab. You uh, dash, you fast fall, and you hold in.
but if you're coming from melee, you're going to have to get used to a lot of different things. Like using dash, up tilt, and the neutral. And uh, I'd say that combos are a bit harder to get in this game compared to like some other what? games. What? I think combos are a bit, or a little bit more difficult. What? Because like, mean, I don't know. For certain characters, maybe. For certain characters. I feel uh... like across the board, if you know how to follow a character using your directional buttons, you can do a combo. I mean, yeah. Let's see, who would be like the one of the harder characters to combo with in this game? Actually, no, 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 no. Let me go back. My mom did a 30% combo on a level 9 uh, uh, <laughs> Literally my mom. Uh, and my mom had no hands. <laughs> and I can still combo. <laughs> what the... Okay. So what was the combo? <laughs> um, she was using Jigglypuff. She did... Near what? into grab. What? It was like near into grab into like. I don't fucking know. Down throw into like fair. And I was like, Mom, what, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Man, stop. Somebody's snoring. <laughs> Mom, what are you doing? The people in the community don't even do these combos. <laughs> Legend. <laughs> Mom, are you a top player? <laughs> My mom. Mom. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's one of the best. That's a new sitcom. I'm living with the top player, and that top player is my mom. <laughs> That's a really long title. Just like, like name a tournament that. Taking the soccer van to Evo. Four stocked by <laughs> Tucson's mom. One. Your dad's daughter will defeat Crusade Dev. <laughs> that is my favorite. <laughs> All right, so I think we talked a lot about stuff. Uh, Since we're talking a lot about the competitive side of SF2, I think it'd be a lot better to show you what people would be doing right and wrong in the competitive side of it. We talked a lot about grab, ledge grabbing, edge guarding, the neutral combos, etc. I think it'd be really good to actually dissect the match and see what people did wrong. That's how you said it, Trey. You were trying to do some shit, and I was like, I'm going to call you out on it. Hey, okay, well, you got me. You got me. <laughs> Since we're talking a lot about stuff. Podcast and then you just cut them off. So, uh, we're going to be critiquing... Dude, did you just wake up? We're going to be critiquing a match that is uh, Jammy versus Chaos Zero. I think I should do it on stream and I should just replace the uh, the Flashcast picture and just put it up through the YouTube video. Is yeah, that a good yeah. idea? Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Alright, why not? Oh my god, I, I want to leave some have... beta footage. Um, some people did want yeah. to note that this is an outlier uh, podcast for having video instead of just like talking. Because otherwise it's not really like a podcast thing. It's more of like a... I don't know. A I don't know. A, must, some kind of stream, I guess. I oh, the stream? Some kind of stream? What yeah. the... Alright, so here's the match video for those of you who want to go and, you know, be in sync with us. I oh, think of a better yeah. word. Uh, <laughs> is everybody ready? Does everybody have the match open? I am ready. No, 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 no. I closed it. <sighs> Why would you close? Shut Very your unprofessional. Alright. You have it? Okay. okay, okay. Okay. Is Afro done snoring? Wins countdown. Afro. Yep. <laughs> read the read the Skype chat. That was like nine forty six, man. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Yeah, what what happened to that guy? He's sleeping. Well, what, what happened? <laughs> He's dreaming about Sonic being top tier. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, make sure you have the game down to zero point twenty five. The speed. Make sure it's zero point twenty five. If you guys. Oh yeah. If you guys have anything that is that you think is you want to talk about, just talk about the second. Go to this second, and then here's what X happened and Y happened. All right, Wind's are we all down? All right, are we all ready? Three, two, three, two, one, go. Okay. Three, two. What? Oh, one. oh, I thought that was it. Yeah, same. Redo. 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 Wait, wait, what the heck? What are you doing nine, with the stream? I just came back. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to play high and I'm ready, I'm ready. Zero point, I got this. 0 0.5. Coach, B, let me in. 0 0.5A. Zero. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> McLeod gaming countdown. Zero McLeod gaming. 
All right, right zero point three, zero point three A, zero point three B, <laughs> zero point two A. You're going in the opposite order. Kirby just got added. <laughs> Lloyd, Beta. Lloyd has Guardian. <laughs> Kirby right, has three. that weird fear where he spits water. Oh, yeah. oh my god! <laughs> I remember that shit. All right, are we actually ready now? Yeah, I, I think yeah. we're all ready. All right, three, two. One, go. Now, what what is everyone's experience with Jammy? What does everybody think of his play style? Uh, good? I think of neutral. What? I <laughs> think he plays the neutral on like a lot of players do. I feel like, like Jamie does really bad on platform stages. So like right off the bat, <laughs> I feel like this is not going to be very good. Oh, he um, didn't take the up air. Yeah. Mm. I also feel like Jamie is super aggro and dash dance heavy, so like on a on a stage like this, his tactics aren't really gonna work very well. Yeah. And playing another very yeah. aggressive character. Or yeah. aggressive player. Alright, so Plus he messed up the tech skill. That was a good read. Oh, you saw that dash up there after the yeah. Okay, go to uh I want to talk about this moment. Go to 10 seconds when Jamie hits the uh, up air. All right. Yeah. What so follow up? Do you, what follow up would you guys consider making right here after the first up air? Going for another one? Uh, no. Grab the ledge. Yeah, <laughs> definitely grab the ledge. Um, <laughs> I don't see any re. Well, are you talking about after the first up air? Or yeah, after after Chaos Zero has been hit. For with the first one. Yeah. I You know he should have stayed oh, in the place. first one. Okay. I saw the yeah. second one and then he went off stage. Yeah. yeah. He should have dropped in place and up there again. Yeah, I would have done the that. first one I honestly would go into shield just really? in case Yeah. So like if you pull up your shield you have at least the option to go with the second up air and it'd still be safe. But if Let's say Chaos Zero did a platform drop near. Mm -hmm. What you're you're done for if you tried to up air again, or a platform drop bear. I feel like the dash up air with the with the dash momentum was probably one of the less safe options. Yeah, because I don't know what the dash up air was for. Well, I wonder what input he missed trying to do that. He might have auto dash. Do you do you know if he runs auto dash? He, yeah, he, he does. does auto dash. So that's some that'd be people fly. will try and you know dash up up air just so because they think that the second one will, I guess will put them off stage and they can go for like a knee as the third follow up, but obviously that wasn't the case. He yeah, probably I... could have dash dance up air and it would have hit with the sweet spot, but uh, he hit with the weak hit box and it was just kind of like a flub. You know what yeah. he really could have done? Since what? he kept Fox on the platform after the first up air, what he could have done, since he has auto dash, he could have dashed forward and did the the jump with the full momentum. And then, and then like, gotten, no, 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 gotten his body, like, up to the height, of, like, short hop. Short hop, get the height of the of the platform that Fox is on, and then do another jump, but backwards, so he, like, shifts oh. his momentum. Yeah, yeah. And he, and he down airs, right? Down airs? Cause see, yeah, that's what, probably a good idea. What uh, what Chaos did? He just he stayed on platform and then he like did some weird forward tilt. I don't <laughs> even know how he got that forward tilt. I don't know what that is. Does does Chaos do auto dash or? I think he just uh was I think he just did uh weird buffer timings. Like he was trying to yeah. dash off and then do a uh like a nair or something like a nair air. back air. Oh okay. So I think uh, just online timings just uh, messing with people. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like the second up air wasn't a horrible option because I mean, even if he hit, if he hit with a sweet spot, great. If he hit with a sour spot, which we knew was gonna connect no matter what, you know, I mean, he's not out anything, so it was still a safe option. It just probably wasn't the optimal option. Yeah, yeah. Afro, what yeah. do you think? Hmm. <laughs> I won't be good at this, but um. You you play Sonic. It's okay. You're a competitive player. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
basically, if I were Jamie, I would have, after the, after the up air, basically, I would have more than likely gone with another up air as well. But basically, that gave Fox enough space to kind of get away from him for a second, and that also meant he could get closer to the middle of the stage to reestablish the neutral. So he couldn't follow up exactly and lead him into an edge guarding position. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Actually, on further analysis, all right. I don't know if the dash was on purpose. No, it was definitely the lag. I know Jamie has issues with, like, online. Yeah. Because, like, I, feel, I see the thought process. If you would have done a standing up air with, like, a little bit of forward momentum, he would have hit with the sweet spot. He would have been in, like, Gucci. Yeah. But he, he like, didn't. <laughs> uh, another, op another options to consider for that, you can probably do another up air. You can go for a dash up. So the worst thing is that Chaos Zero would shield. And since we know that Chaos Zero uh, did an F tilt in there, dash up yeah. tilt would have hit, and then he would have, like, either been at the corner or off stage. And then... Yeah. Another option to consider is that after the up air, he can just respect Chaos Zero since he doesn't have a lot of stage position going for him and Jamie has everything to work with. Uh, Chaos Zero is probably going to drop down to the the ground and then Jamie could just wall out with Nairs. Um, I feel, like that's, one of the, I feel like that's one of the least safe options because if he gets down on... CF's level, then Jamie has no... I feel like Jamie right now has an advantage, because Fox is known to have a huge dead zone under him. He doesn't have anything fast enough where he can punish what's going on under that platform. Right. If No matter what he does, even if it's a platform drop, yada yada, he is in a bad position. But, also... What Jamie did also put him, it put Fox in CF's dead zone. Like, after that sour spot up air hit, Jamie doesn't have anything with range enough to really follow up from that sour spot except for side B, which would be like a really, like, <laughs> random CF on Wi Fi kind of decision. That's something that Jamie and Tag 3 go for, the side Bs. Yeah, at side Bs, okay sometimes, but in, in the case that you're opponent is on a platform not in hit stun and probably gonna sh gonna drop from the platform it'd be a dumbass option <laughs> it's, a, it's a big read for sure yeah because they're you're gonna be reading the quick drop or them dropping down right yeah he could definitely side be under the platform but side being over the platform which honestly i don't know if a, i think a, if he did a side b under the platform he probably would have got caught at the ledge i yeah. don't think it would have been because after the up air ended he was below the ledge Right. But um yeah. overall bad decision making on Jamie's part. It it could not know. have been a missed input, who knows. But I I would I would put it like he he was still safe. I would do like a 7.5 out of 10. Yeah. Uh I think Chaos Zero now now that we unpause, Chaos Zero has all the positioning in the world. But he chooses to dash back and give him center stage. He goes for down tilt. Dash forwards and hit gets hit by the side B. Oh, you almost got the read. Oh my god. Oh, get up attack. Why would you? Why do you guys think he would get up attack in that situation? <clears throat> uh, because yeah, he tried short hop back airing Jamie, but then, so Jamie knew he's like, oh well, he's gonna go for another option because he didn't know that Fox's short hop bear can't reach the platform. <laughs> Yeah. I, f I feel like get up attack is a panic option for a lot of people. Yeah. yeah. The thing about when Falcon's you're... get up attack is like yeah. the reason why I do it a lot is because it's just really good compared to other get up attacks. It has a lingering hitbox, so I'm not yeah. going to say it was the worst decision in this aspect, but you, unless Chaos Zero just completely dropped the ball, it wasn't going to do anything good. Yeah. When you're in that position on a platform, when you're crashed down on a platform, you know there's some sort of follow-up. So you just have to try and basically reduce what options are going to hit you if possible and hope that the opponent stuffs up. Because at that point, you can't, you can't just jump. You can't platform drop anything. You have no shield. You're kind of screwed. Yeah. 
Uh, let's go to 17 seconds because I think this was probably the most or the first big important moment of the match when Jamie was being edge guarded. And how do you guys treat Chaos Zero's edge guard? Since he didn't get it, it's like an obvious zero out of ten. But how do you guys feel about it, the decision making? It yeah. was it, it's super unsafe. It, if it worked, let let's let's go to the part where Firefox is going up against Jamie, and Jamie's trying to buffer his shield. I'm sorry, buffer his uh, ledge attack. Right. So, when Jamie's holding the ledge, he has if he does not buffer that ledge attack. He's going to get hit out of his invincibility on the first frame that he's able to do anything else. So, given that Jamie buffered that ledge attack, he was in good shape. But what Chaos Zero tried to do, which was kind of questionable, honestly, was aim his Firefox up so that it would hit him as he's doing his ledge attack or as he's getting up from the ledge, hoping that he would be doing either a jump or just a regular ledge climb instead of a ledge attack or jump. Yeah. Uh, uh, or, I'm sorry, ledge attack or roll. So, it wasn't a bad option, and I don't know where you paused, but the hitboxes, if they were covering the fire effect, they would have hit Cap Captain Falcon, but they're on Fox's body. Yeah, I see. So, like... There were a couple frames in there where it didn't look like it was going to hit, but since um, Captain Falcon retracts after his ledge attack, it did still connect. Um, and after it connected, you're you're at like a you're at a pretty awkward position because you guys are overlapping and neither of you can do any sort of attack. Um, and then going forward from there, since Jamie's in crash on a platform again, he's screwed. Yeah, I think so, that was, I think that's a big awkward moment. For... I don't know if it. I, I feel like it wasn't planned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, he made the best of the situation that he put himself in by doing up B, um, and then aiming it upwards. I don't know why he did that. If it were me, probably the safest option would be to do it towards the ledge. But um, that means I mean, it, it a, worked out. That means you'd have a higher risk of getting hit by get up attack. I think he did that just because he missed his shine spike and he was gonna go for the. Up his sweet spot, but Jamie just grabbed the ledge before him. Well, no, because he was aiming upward. There's no way he could have sweet spotted. Or no, you mean I he mean, decided uh, not to sweet spot during the startup? I mean, yeah, his aim was to just sweet spot during the startup. Okay, got yeah. it. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, mm -hmm. Now that we go to <laughs> 30 seconds, this scenario happens again. Because Jamie failed to miss the tech, and Chaos Zero wants to go for the Shine Spike follow-up, predicting a uh, jump read. Jamie did it a couple seconds later, then they both get hit by... Or they, uh, Chaos Zero gets hit by it. See, this is where ledge teching is very important, because if Chaos Zero ledge teched the, uh, the up B, he would have been in a much favorable position. And then, uh, I feel like he would have got the Shine Spike. Or something like that. I feel like this is another awkward situation. Yeah, this is very awkward. Because one thing that Chaos Zero hates doing is grabbing. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but <laughs> there are so many situations where, especially after um, Jamie missed his knee, I don't know if that was an optimal punish. I probably, at that percentage, would have tried, like, up throw up air. Yeah. Or even like down throw tech chasing to kind of rack up damage and then go for the bear. Because that was a little early. And I think just because Jamie um, did his... Jamie did his down B a little late. Or I'm sorry, a little early, not a little late. That's the only reason he didn't recover. Hmm. Because he could have made that. He, he could have? Yeah, for sure. I don't know. I think uh once you use up your down B your your momentum is limited. So like what Jimmy did was he did um he did a jump before his down B. He should have done down B then jump then, jump, then up B. Yeah, cuz I and, think he would have probably landed on stage. Yeah, and this is something that I kind of learned from mating Brawl Yoshi way back when. 
um, you use your up B before you run out of jumps. That way, when you need your jump, it's there. And you yeah. end up going farther. That kind of applies the same thing, too, to Yoshi in this game. Yeah. Alright, after that, like, very awkward as guard. Yeah, that also being said, I want to elaborate, because Jamie did a ledge jump up, um, ledge jump, um, knee for some reason. I think hey, that was a too big a risk. That was a super hella screw up. <laughs> yeah. That's like um, something a melee player would do. Because I see them do those a lot. I mean, it. I don't but know any it's... scenario where that would have worked unless Chaos Zero got super autistic and tried to <laughs> tried to no, go yeah, I... toward the ledge. I agree, it wouldn't have worked, but it's like I know Jamie plays melee a lot, and it's like I suppose it's just yeah. a habit that he has just doing it a lot. And you know, and up for watching it really good there. Yeah. yeah. Nair or up air would have been better in that situation. Yeah. But I still still think Bear would have hit him out of it. Mm. And and then immediately after, as much as I love his sliding down smash punish beautiful <laughs> um a little bit later after he lands his knee and then goes for the sour spot knee jamie doesn't do the guaranteed sour spot knee into up air wait uh 43 seconds right yeah okay yeah he goes for just something else he just kind of he he gets all depressed and just falls because <laughs> i know the the uh the confident jamie would have hit that like a hundred times a week yeah. but i guess he was just wasn't feeling it not really feeling it. That was a good on the down smash, by the way. Yeah. In 47 seconds. Because he could have DI'd that way worse. Yeah. Definitely. Jamie lost a neutral that one time due to up tilt. Uh, I, every time I lose the neutral, I think of the move that made me lose the neutral in that situation. So if I see that I lost the neutral to up tilt, I'll try my best not to have that situation happen again. Reverse F tilt. 53 seconds. What the? Uh, yeah, I saw that. That was a very awkward interaction. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he dashes forward, and then he gets hit by the... Oh, that up smash. Missed inputs forever. I'm yeah. um, like... <laughs> I really wish Jamie, after he landed that Falcon kick, would have done a forward side B. That would have been hella, like, beautiful. <laughs> Uh, that would have well, been a sexual experience. How super unsafe, but would have been pretty. Yeah. Uh, no. He's already like a stock <laughs> down. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a disrespectful very good idea. though. Very disrespectful. You Actually, win the mind game. Yeah. I suppose. <laughs> Who would really win the match if that happened? <laughs> I wish there was like a stat that says the true winner, like the hype, yeah. <laughs> the, <laughs> the winner in our game. hearts. Yeah. <laughs> or the crowd winner, and then it <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. See, he loses to up tilt again, but he takes in place. That's important. 109, that's important. He takes in place. Keep in mind, he takes in place. Because if they tech, that way, one time, they'll do it again. Like right after the down throw, tech in place again. Jamie's just getting hit by these up tilts due to just staying in shield and spot dodging. Yeah. Well, that's the big thing. The stage choice really screws him up. Because what are you going to do versus an up tilt besides shield? Not like, what do, you, what do you even have? <laughs> you I have mean, the nothing. only way you would beat it out is Your if you do something preemptive. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good up air, by the way. Yeah, that was a good up air. We got a... I don't know what Chaos Zero was going for. Like, after the jump, like, he didn't... He wasn't going to get any stage positioning. And I guess he was just going from platform to platform. I don't know. In a situation where he did up air, I think he should have backered. Jab reset combos. I just got to throw this out there. Jab reset combos make me gay. There's a reason why. Uh, nobody did them for the first half of 9B's, 9B's I know, competitive life but I'm cycle. S I'm so glad people noticed because that is beautiful. Yeah. And if only Goku had one. If only Goku. Goku is like the best jab in the game. No, Goku does have one. Yeah, but it's like not even that good. <laughs> it, it's so good. You can get guaranteed Kaioken or up, up throw. <sighs> oh, you saw... Look at that. Uh, Go to 1 minute and 26 seconds. I want to 
talk about how smart that decision was from Chaos Zero. After the uh, up smash, the very weird up smash, he shine stalls not to get hit by the up air. Look how close. I, th I really think that he thought he had a jump. Really? I don't think that was intentional. I really uh, hope it was intentional. <laughs> he still got hit by the second up air. And Actually, got... why, why doesn't he have a jump? Let's look back. Oh, he back. wait. He used his jump to a up B. Yeah. Oh, so smash. he wasted it, and then okay, yeah, that was definitely an uh a mistake. Yeah, but because... I think the shine stall was pretty smart. Yeah. Even though uh he got hit by the second one. Now let's look at Jamie's edge guard. He goes off stage. But he still gets the knee in the up air. Yeah, I would say it's pretty risky, but it covered both options. If Chaos Zero wanted to Firefox or up B, he still would have got hit by the weak knee. And he did what you said. The uh sour spot knee into up air. Yeah. Pretty smart, pretty smart. Jamie has the stock lead. Let's see what he does. Just remember. Ah, oh, the the runoff Nair. Chaos Zero deciding to follow it up. On is this awkward situation gonna happen again? Waste his jump. Uh let's let's look at how Jamie treats this situation. See was that really the smartest decision? Where what at? time? Uh one minute thirty eight. I don't know where that second knee came from. I don't know whose family that belongs to, but somebody needs to come get it. <laughs> it should have been a down there. I'll say. Uh, yeah. Get it. That would have been a <laughs> prime, prime ass down here. Because I, he kind of just flubbed up the spacing on that one. Like maybe if he dashed back and did it instead of immediately yeah. dashing yeah. forward. That but looks like it was. Then the side B still would have. Yeah. The side B still would have had. Fox out of position to be hit yeah. by that. If I he, still think Donner would have been the best option there. I think if he paid attention been. to his spacing, I think uh, maybe ledge grabbing would have been the best, the most ideal thing to do in that situation because it would have worked. Falcon would be fast enough to do it, but yeah. see, you got to practice ledge grabbing. In situations like this, it's very, very important to. You got to keep in mind where Fox wants to illusion. Like, look at that. Good sweet spot. I'd say uh, poor edge guarding by Jamie. Then the worst thing after that, he gets hit by the side B, but he doesn't tech. Then he gets hit by the down air up tilt. How can he not tech Firefox? And then all that happened just because of he lost his stock due to one bad edge guard. Yeah. Yeah. Sucks. <laughs> Rip. Just like D he didn't tech, he di'd poorly on the up tilt, and he just missed the edge guard. Three, three bad decisions in like two seconds, basically. It's a hard life. It's a hard knock life for Falcons. <laughs> yeah, I I think a lot of Falcon players do have a hard time in this matchup specifically, really. Yeah, they don't really practice against uh, they don't really practice their follow ups against Fox. I I'd say. Yeah. Okay. They're really worried about, I guess, DI and Fox's combos when they should be like kind of practicing their own. Yeah. All right. Tech situation. Uh. Rip. All right. You still got hit. Still got hit by the downer. Jab reset. Knee. Yeah. That was really good. I know that. Oh. That was that was everything. Double knee. Oh. Let's go. That was sick. Obviously, the mistake here was that. Um, Chaos didn't tech. So, RIP. Oh, Chaos Zero is actually in the chat. Okay. Uh, that's cool. So, if we're thinking about a decision, he can, like... Yeah, he can inform <clears throat> us what he was thinking, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, something that a lot of players like to do is run off bear. And I think that's been popularized by Kios, since Kios likes to do it a lot. Yeah. But it's not a bad we, option. We should definitely break down the tech chase that happens um, not too far after where I think you're at right now. Yeah. He gets hit by the up tilt again. 
Yeah. I think Jamie... Has Jamie won the neutral in this game yet? We, I don't um, feel like... I feel like, in general, the matchup kind of prevents him from... He has to work harder. And the stage is making it really hard. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'd say Jamie's not utilizing his tilts, which are really good against Fox. Down tilt's really good, and F tilt's really good. J Proto knows, because I I use F tilt quite a lot against him when we're playing Fox. Yeah, Falcon. and it ends good. It's it's a good option. Yeah. Okay, so wh what's your timestamp right now? It is 2 minutes, 15 seconds. This whole edge guarding scenario that happened yeah. at least three times this game. <laughs> This is, you know, this is hard to watch. <laughs> it just gets spiked down. Yeah. Jamie doesn't really get much going in that stock. Uh, maybe hit him like once or twice. That was it. I feel like one thing that Jamie really needs to learn in this matchup is pivot grabbing. He goes for a lot of unsafe, like, forward grabs, but I haven't seen him do a pivot grab at all. I think that's the thing with Jamie's gameplay as well. He just goes for um, the really big risk option instead of doing the most optimal thing. His dash dancing is really good, but after, like, a down throw, he likes to go for dare instead of, like, yeah. a safer option. Are you at that, like, tech chasing sequence? Not yet. What? Oh, no. How? Uh, what 220, speed are you at? <laughs> 226. Oh, no, Mati. He gets the down throw. Yeah. yeah. And then he texts in. He gets the dare. Jab. So that no, was no a solid reset. read. <sighs> I don't know why he, like, runs away. Because like, <laughs> he, had, he, he had the neutral. Yeah, he just scared. That being said, he got near and went for a grab, which would not have worked in any scenario. I think... This is a this is a clear cut case of your eyes just watching one position. Yeah. His eyes were focused on when uh, he had he had such a big read that Chaos Zero was gonna tech right, so his eyes were just constantly watching when Fox texts right, and that's when he was dashing away for it, so he can react to it with a grab. Right. But uh, Chaos Zero mixed it up, so I think that's just him his eyes watching the wrong thing. Then he's and just then he, like, he gets to the side B and he just like dash dances under the platform. <laughs> yeah. He kind of loves up to punish. Uh, yeah. I think on the first side B, he misses the jab reset, and I'm watching it now. This SD makes me cry. But um, that uh, he kind of loves up the second one as well. As you said, he kind of just dashes in the ground and yeah, it's like, tech oh, chase. I'm tech chasing nothing. Oh, My okay. mama never told me to <laughs> talk to tech chases. Yeah, so oh, this was is... no, no. Yeah, you just saw it. Yeah, that was heartbreak. I don't know. Jay was doing so well in this match, and I think he just yeah. kind of flubbed up the punish. Since and that's he... a big thing in this matchup. Yeah, Fox had Fox. The Fox player more or less will probably not flub up the punish. Unless you have a hard time short hopping, they're probably not going to flub up the punish. But with Falcon, you have to be very specific. And you have to be on point, more or less. And that, unfortunately, was not the case for Jamie, I suppose. Yeah, it, uh, I think edge guarding could, a lot of, could have been way cleaner this game. There was a lot of sloppy interactions from both sides, really. Um, questionable, questionable decision, decisions on the edge from both uh, players. Both yeah. could have easily just been killed by their own up Bs, really. I think one now, problem with a lot of auto dash users is that they don't really uh, yeah, work it, on their walk button. Because you saw there, Jammy under the platform, he goes for dash up air like twice when he could just use his walk button, and then just do short hop up airs. For sure. But, but that's just one thing. What, what were you going to say? Anyone? Um, I feel like one of the things that Jamie just flat out does not do is use jab when he's not jab resetting. Yeah. And I feel like this this holds true for a lot of Falcons with that AT that you found. Yeah. 
where you can hold both forward and back and do a jab out of run. There are a lot of scenarios where he went for an unsafe grab when he could have done jab grab, and it would have been perfect. Absolutely perfect. Or jab up air, even, at high percentages. Or jab yeah. near. Jab near, yeah. Jab near is really good. Very, very good. Uh, yeah. So, that was... It, overall, we focused a lot on Jamie's gameplay because Jamie requested that I analyze this match and primarily tell him what he did right and wrong. What do you think Jamie did right in this game? His punishes were on point. His punishes were good. His punishes but were good. The double I knee. honestly... Yeah, that was a good... That was good, but honestly, I don't really think he did much very well other than that. Not, no shots to him. I think he's a great player, but... Um, he just flubbed up a lot of things, like edge guarding and overall. The neutral, he would keep losing to Fox. And I suppose the stage and, you know, the character mashup made it difficult on him. Yeah, I but, think Battlefield is a bad stage for Falcon. Like, his movement gets cut off. I he feel like definitely in, prefers Dreamland. He was in a deficit, and I think he knew that. And I think that that played a big part in him getting the shakies before the match, and it kind of messed up with his judgment. Because when you know you're playing a bad matchup, of course you're not going to be on your prime if you get yourself psyched out about it. Yeah. Or, you know, sometimes people who kind of, I guess, accept defeat before they even start the match will kind of just play better sometimes. Yeah. I know. I know. Um, that being said, I feel like Jamie has really good fun to fundamentals, but I feel like he plays a crowd-pleaser Falcon. Yeah. Which, That's, don't get me wrong, nothing wrong with that, but... It's not going to win you the match, match. Yeah, when you're, in a ma when you're in a deficit like this where it's a bad matchup and it's a bad stage for you, you can't really... I feel like you kind of have to adapt to the situation and play safer. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think he could practice the more safer options. Uh, his dash dance grabs... He didn't really see the thing that I'd say that I'm pretty good at. Uh, I'd say that I'm pretty good at tech chasing because I pay attention whenever yeah. the opponent texts a certain way, and I just keep track of it because I know they're gonna do it again. But I'm gonna take into consideration the patterns that they do after the second one, third one, fourth one, etc. Because everyone has a different pattern after they do the first tech. Because that's when they start catching on, and you got to remember when they start switching it up, because that's very important. And Jamie didn't get a lot off his his, his uh, down throws, except that he got, like, <laughs> two good reads. Down throw, dare, jab reset knee, or whatever. And we love his dash dancing and his neutral, but he, he that didn't win him the game. <laughs> yeah. So, mm. you know, there are more important things than dash dancing and the neutral. And, you know, I know Jamie wants to win because he's asking us to do this. Yeah. Uh, and I respect that because I not many people will ask to do this or for us to do this. I think if I had to give one big piece of um, feedback to Jamie, it would be that when he knows he controls the neutral, he needs to stop dashing away. Get, uh, maintain center stage, yeah. I feel like he plays a lot of reach treats when even when tech chasing he did like a full dash backwards and then tried to dash in while fox was nearing um and i think that might be a side effect of auto dash and that's one of the reasons why i don't really use auto dash because it becomes like a crunch it's so easy to just press you know away and escape a situation but the second you want to turn around you're dashing in the other direction yeah and that's why walking is so useful in ssf2 I agree. Yeah. I, that. So, I just walk a lot. Especially in Kaioken. That forward tilt, though. Kaioken walk <laughs> to the other side at tilt. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite. Kaioken walk away from the opponent at tilt when they approach. No, no, no. It's actually a combo. It's the, the funny Oh, thing. no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, all hits none. So, with that being said, the big points, big points, big points. 
you edge guarding with sloppy punishes uh jammy needs to keep in mind of where the opponent attacks more he got one good read but he didn't really extend it and utilized the walk button more he messed up quite a bit of times and for chaos zero i think chaos zero played decently he didn't really make too big of mistakes and he did a couple smart things like he got his edge yeah. guards I think more usage of tilts, like down tilt, F tilt, would be good in this matchup. Yeah. Just using it in the neutral, kind of just stuffing out an approach. Uh, down tilt is so good against Fox's Nair. Yeah. And I feel <laughs> yeah, like it was it really completely, is. completely, completely ignored, which was honestly one of the one of the bigger fatal mistakes that he made. Uh, let's see. He didn't wall out that much. I think just. just Short hopping and spamming an aerial is completely fine. He did a couple times with up air, but... Yeah, he didn't really pose a threat with his nair. He just dash danced. And uh, that's good and all, but you gotta wall out. Sometimes. Yeah. I think one of the big things in this matchup... A lot of people... There's a lot of different opinions about whether Fox wins it or Falcon wins it. I think Fox wins it <clears throat> because Fox is an easier time comboing and edge guarding and whatnot. But... Uh, the main thing here, if Falcon wants to win, when they're both in a neutral, whenever Fox nares first, you nair after. Always. Because your nair is going to beat out his nair. And if he recognized that, then I think he would have did a little bit better. I don't think nairing at them as Falcon is a very good option. Yeah. That's why you got to <laughs> do You should it always after. be like did reactionary type. Don't try and go in first. Because even though Falcon's a very aggressive character, you can't play like that to win. Sometimes you gotta know when, when to turn it on and when to turn it off. Sometimes when you go all in, you go all out. What? <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what the? What the? So, with that being said, Jammy, dude. You gotta play better. <laughs> if you gave us a better match, then I think we would have uh, complimented you a lot more. Yeah, I feel like it's I it's definitely formidable that you sent us a clip where you were playing a bad matchup, and I could tell you were shaken up. But I know I know you're better than that, so I don't know if that was a good match to really give feedback on. Yeah, it sucks because uh, the other matches, the one match was like six minutes long, and then the other match, Chaos Zero just four stock Jamie. So I guess this yeah. is the best yeah. one out of all three. Getting, we can't really dissect much of the four stocks because it's just, I mean, you got four stocked. I mean, you made like maybe one mistake and punish was just really, really good. Yeah. That's usually what will happen in a four stock. Very few times it's multiple, multiple, multiple mistakes. Uh, yeah. And with the, we're we're not gonna try and go over the three hour mark, guys. We're cutting it down. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're right. cutting it down. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them now, because I think this is the wrap-up part. We're wrapping up. You can always play the actual mashup on stream. Do you want it? Dude, that's such a smart... Let's do it. That's a, that's a smart idea. Let's do it. Uh, Alright. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Alright. t yeah. sounds Falcon versus... <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna hear a lot of button pressing on my side. My mic does not hold back in terms of sounds. Don't hold back, hold. Yeah, it's a it's a laptop, right? Yeah, it is a laptop mic. Surprisingly, I don't sound like a robot or sound like I'm. Is on this something. going to be every Saturday? Um, uh, I think so. Yeah, we can come up with topics for Saturday for every Saturday. I mean, I'm I really appreciate. Tison being here because Tison's really good at this type of stuff. Mm. Captain Falcon. I don't Well, I don't. I don't know if this will be like a thing because work. But wait, are you going Fox or Falcon? I'm going Falcon. Um, currently, what we're doing is we're trying to do it every Saturday. Um, basically, come up with the topics over the week and um, discuss. Talk about them over and all that. Um, same that. 
So currently, yes, it is going to be every Saturday. Um, we're probably not going to have like all the people. Like, we're not gonna have like the same cast probably every single week. We might do someone completely different. We might have like everyone be different. We could have, you know, there's a lot of possibilities to work with. Yeah. Feel free to ask questions right now, guys. Tyler, don't lie. What? No, uh, no one's playing with a GameCube controller right now, but um, it's definitely a possibility if you have X Pattern. Um, um, there are a couple guys. Honestly, you can find some pretty good ones literally by going on YouTube and searching X Pattern SSF2. I personally use a GameCube controller, but um, I, I'd say it's all right. I went from um, a 360 controller to the GameCube controller. Are you guys doing stream matches? Yeah, uh, we ana oh, get right. We analyzed the uh, Falcon versus <laughs> Fox match, so we're going to be doing a demonstration match on stream. All Showing of the players right now are using keyboard. Just yeah. Wait, what? Wait. So where do you go, Mars? Uh, well, I, I had to do something for a thing, and then I didn't want to join the call again because it felt wrong. So I went on Anthur's ladder and I restocked some guy, and I felt good about oh. myself. Dude, in <laughs> SSF2? Yeah. I'm proud of you. He was using Captain Jesus Christ, man. Our practice and, paid off. Yeah. Um. <laughs> and then I... Uh, Let's check that oh, out. Uh, he counterpicked Link. And I, I found out how early Dare kills. <laughs> <laughs> I was at like 80. <laughs> Do you know uh, who you played? Uh, such with a C. Karen. <laughs> oh my God. What Hi you. <laughs> uh, for joining in on the podcast. Um, <sighs> basically. If you feel like you can contribute to the pod or oh the my podcast God, right. anyway, uh, I pretty much say make sure you have a decent mic. Um, mine, Perdo's, uh, pretty much all of ours are T's on to an good. extent. Don't ever say mine. Yeah. <laughs> I've got pretty decent mic, so it's easy to um, understand us with when they don't like uh, have like. When I'm editing, there's no like gigantic uh, red marks on the uh, soundboard. So. Also, but yeah. for me. Uh, <laughs> I, I played, I played Pactera. You played who? Pactera. Never heard of him. Awesome. Well, that makes me less proud. <laughs> oh. Try to make sure that there's um some sort of like. I wouldn't say soundproof room, but, uh, you know. At least try quiet, sure... no dogs barking. Yeah. I'm in my grandma's basement. loud laptop fans. Like, I'm in I my mean, grandma's basement, so, uh, yeah. You're human. You can't really do a whole lot, but, um, you know, if you can, it just makes things a lot easier. It sounds my, a lot better. Is my laptop's fan, like, making a noise? It's not that bad, but, you know, it's, no, it's a little doable. noticeable. It's I was terrible. Just, I was just playing with you. <laughs> you know us devs have a sense of humor. I hate all of this. Do you really? Let's add money to the call. <laughs> uh... <laughs> uh... I want to play some Smash Bros. too. That's what's happening. No, you didn't have a Smash Grub, you could join. Don't worry. You're cool. Uh, no one... Man, no one asked oh, that's questions. Smash Grub? Man. Yeah, that's Smash no? Grub. No. Well, should we just play on stream again? <laughs> I think, okay, I think one demonstration match is good because we showed uh, yeah. that you got a ledge tech whenever Falcon up bees you and punishes. Since I punish your. That's how you edge guard as Falcon, what I did versus uh, Proto. Yeah, that was good. Right, so I have a problem with this game. There's no stamina mode, uh, there's servo mode. Uh, yeah, I see that. 
You have everything but what I said. <laughs> Wait till beta. Uh, Come on. Beta. Uh, whatever. 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 Whatever, man. Uh, so I, after you concluded, I try to start the intro. You're the host. You're the host. Um, any other questions before like this ends? Uh, I mean, I might have missed one. Where would you place Sonic on the tier list? That's my question. Seven. <laughs> where would I place Sonic on the tier list? Yes. Um, I'd say he's definitely time. lower. Like I used to think he was like I dead asked. bottom. But then I was starting to feel kind of doofy. And um, looking at him now, I'd say that his current tier list placement, I think he's 27th out of 29th. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's kind of... I almost agree with it. I'm what? not going to lie. I think like, Sonic's mid-tier. I think he's... I would say. I would say he's definitely above 27th, but I wouldn't say... Um, I'd say be like top of C plus. I think you know what I mean. So like everyone under top eight is just like uh fuck. <laughs> uh they're okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So here's a question. How to how do you start off in the community as a new person? We've all done that before. We've all started on the community. Yeah. There, I started from the bad side. I think I'm in, I think I'm exempt from this question. <laughs> Basically, yeah. uh, there are good ways to do it. and There are bad ways to do it. One of the bad uh, ways to do it is basically being. I don't want to name names here, but I really want to. Be an anime king, lol twenty. Being a, you know, is random dude who thinks he's good. Six seven six six six. You know, you can't be that can guy. I, can I Here, say how I me, started? Don't be obnoxious. Uh, I used to be probably one of the most hated people in this community. You can ask pretty much anyone that knew me back then. And, you know, I sort of got infamous for that. No pun intended. But uh, I definitely got a bad name uh, for a long time. And a lot of people didn't like me. But, um, yeah, I hated you. Me too. Yeah. I still do. Uh, well, soldiers is the exception. But, like... <laughs> You know, I feel like if you do start off in a bad foot, and if you have a desire to, like, you know, try and become a better person, I think you can definitely change, unlike some people. <laughs> Let's be completely but, honest. If you want to get started, I think the only thing you need to do is just play the game, and when you lose, just take, take the loss and learn from it. Don't be a dick bag. That's uh, literally all you have to do. Now, making... if you want to... Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, oh. 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 Go ahead. If you want to make, make an impact and like make a difference, just try and document your path along the way. Exactly. Uh, look at my streams. Basically. Remember interacting when chats. I think interacting in active chats are very good. Uh, gets your name out there. There's a lot of people that I know in, you know, Slack that don't really, that aren't really the greatest players, but I just know them because, you know, they interact a lot in the chat. Yeah. Know? And of course, um, being a good player is probably going to help you out a lot. Think of the people who were barely noticed, but when they started winning tournaments, now they're like a big... Yeah, player. yeah, I can uh, definitely speak from experience from that. <laughs> like, not trying to sound <laughs> cocky, not trying to sound cocky, but like... From zero to a hundred, real quick. Exactly, point. like some random ass people. Just I don't know. Never mind. It sounded good when I started. Look at yeah, look at Mars, dude. Now everybody knows his name. He has two hundred followers on Twitter. Ridiculous. <laughs> Ridiculous. In a week. <laughs> In a week. <laughs> um, my own personal story is like, I kind of joined into the forums and then uh, I kind of did some of the uh, I did like that OBS guy originally. And then, like, uh, later on, I joined the IRC. So mine was basically, like, the only way I got known was being semi-decent at it and then making stuff that people needed for, like, guides, for example. Like, Soldier Sunday mentioned guides a lot and how there's, like, a huge lack of them. Like, if you, like... 
If you, uh, and again, would anyone listen to someone that didn't? Yeah. Never mind. I'm kind of thinking as I'm going now. But uh, if you want to get known, like, the best way to go about it is be kind of, if you win, you know, you win, okay? You know, you can learn from a win, too. You don't have to be, like, in your face, you suck, go the hell, die, whatever. Um, <laughs> if you, Lloyd's broken, you know. Lloyd's broken, you know. <laughs> that um, is the only, you, you can say that, but that, that's about it. That's about if, it. DK's broken. If you do, like, lose, though... And this is, like, the biggest part that I think a lot of people don't get about losses. And this extends to pretty much anything that's going to happen to you. Not even in Smash, but, like, in life, too. If you ever lose, you don't ever need to be a jackass about it. Yeah. Like, there is no reason for it whatsoever. And I understand that in any sort of competitive setting, there is going to be that feeling of like, damn, I lost, you know? Like, maybe I got outplayed, maybe I was just like, maybe I was tired. Maybe I came home from work after working a graveyard shift and like, I just can't play as well as I could when like, I was working till 10 p.m. and I could just kind of be fresh. I'm but... no excuses. I, I wasn't hydrated. There was sun in my eyes, the glare on the TV. Yeah, there's so <laughs> many excuses you could make for yourself, but when you make excuses for yourself, that's going to be, like, what defines you as a person, and the that's going to be... <laughs> the other player was too ugly when I was looking at him. Yeah, you know? like, stupid crap <laughs> like that. Like, come on, guys. Just don't be a dickhead. If you lose, you, maybe you got outplayed. Maybe you aren't, maybe you really aren't that great, you know? Maybe you're the best of your friends, but maybe you're just not the best in this community. And that's fine. You don't have to be. One it's... good one good point Kid Aurora made is that you gotta be a personality. Look at mm -hmm. how many look at T Son. You know how many people are talking about T Son's basement and T Son's hair and T Son's fucking T Zelda or whatever? Yeah, T Son sucks. That's yeah. that's one way to get known in the community. Now okay. everybody talks about system. Hang on, hang on, hang on. So <laughs> <laughs> I think that the major reason why I'm disgust is not because I'm super good, not because I'm super cute. <laughs> the big reason why people give a half, half, half a rat's nipple about me is because ew, <laughs> is because I have a personality. Right. I feel like a lot of times when you're in a community, this. Um, in a community this opinionated, um, especially starting out, it's really easy to just like, yeah, I agree with this because this well-known person says this. Oh, I, I, uh, I like this character because this person said this character's good. Like, just, just pick someone you like and just get really good. Yeah, that's why, uh, everybody Have likes... your own opinions. That's why um, the majority of the players like instinct and z a lot yeah like play... instinct instinct is the mvp i'm gonna be completely honest see because how, see look at that anyone anyone can tell instinct that ness is bad and then instinct will turn around and two stock them oops sorry bye drops mic like go you go instinct like that's how kios became a personality as well nobody plays zss except for him and he's yeah. pretty much like and he feel, it. yeah. Some people feel a loyalty to their character, and some people feel like a character is a good extension of like how they feel as a person. A lot of people say that about like, I don't know, Melee Fox, because Melee Fox, there's a different style for everyone that's playing Melee Fox. No one right. plays Melee Fox the same way. Um, so I feel like with the with the game like SSF2, there's enough characters where someone's got to resonate with you. Exactly. Even if it's not that top tier character that everyone's super excited about, because we're in a stage of like figuring out what what makes a character good in SSF2. So if you rule out the low tiers just because they're placed on that list that's not even finished yet, on in the bottom tier, then 
not only are we never going to figure out how good that character is, but you're probably going to be playing someone that you don't even like. Right. You're going to be playing Falcon, but you hate getting comboed. Yeah, you, you could be one. Of, mm -hmm. You could be one of a million foxes, or you could be the only person who uses Kirby and be really good. Yeah, and that'll I mean, make and you. And there's pretty much like no good Kirby, so anyone can take up that position. I know how that feels. How do you get out of training mode in this game? <laughs> uh, you uh, can press press back. and pre press your start button, which could be back or enter, and hit finish this new with voice? the mouse. The new Keyson. I guess the new hey, voice is Tison is the very Tison is the guy who was talking about uh character loyalty and all that stuff. Hey, just because I lost the T Lord doesn't mean he's good. <laughs> I hate Kirby. Kirby's Damn. my worst matchup. I'm gonna start playing Kirby now. No, <laughs> if you want to first it was like guess I'm dropping first it was like Goku, ZSS, now nah, I'm just switching to Kirby. If you want to win against me in tournament, the best bet is to play Lloyd, ZSS, or Kirby. <laughs> Two um, top tiers and one low tier. Nah, I'll just play Goku. That's how you beat me. If you play yeah, Fox, okay. I'm going to ditto you and it, you're probably going to lose. And Jinka, that is that okay. is exactly... Shut up. That is exactly why I um, like working on SSF2. Because... SSF2 is designed in a way where it's supposed to be like introductory. It's not as hard as melee. It's not as boring as brawl. <laughs> it, it's <laughs> it's not as not as constantly changing as Smash 4 and it's not as ridiculous as 64. It's some beautiful conglomeration, some beautiful creation of Putting, taking all the best things out of all the Smash games and putting them together. That so no if you one start wants to play. <laughs> shut up. That is so, not how you use conglomeration. At, I don't at all. fucking know. Some some big yeah. con congregation. Con congregation. Brother. congregation. Shut up. <laughs> some big some big kaleidoscope. I don't know. <laughs> some <laughs> collusion. Kaleidoscope. Something that starts are this. using these wrongs. Collage. So big collage Man, of all Smash the best things. Two devs are dumb. <laughs> I never said I was a fucking thesaurus. No, but um, <laughs> SSF2 is this big, beautiful creation from taking all the best things from all the Smash games and putting them into one. So, I feel like if you started out with SSF2, it put you in prime position to turn around and go be Good at melee with a little learning. Be good at brawl with a little learning. Be good at Smash Four with a little learning. Yeah. Um, kaleidoscope. That's so. Not... Shut up. So, <laughs> I don't know. That's that's one of the things I'm most proud about with SSF Two. It's a good place to start if you've never gotten into Smash. And if I can say, hey, this top player started playing SSF Two, and that's what made them play Smash Four. They started with us. Y'all niggas suck. Um, right. That'd be great. That'd be awesome. Um, and movement in the opposite direction is just as exciting to me. And I really hate some of this. I, I don't like playing this, some of the Smash games because they don't have this, some of the mechanics that SF2 has. And I think that's a missed opportunity because SF2 mechanics are really, really good. And Melee doesn't have them. I'm like, it, it just sucks. You know? Yeah. I wish Melee, I really wish Melee had some of SF2's mechanics. It'd be so cool if you could down smash out of a run in Melee. That'd just be, like, beautiful. Yeah. I wish we had more anime characters. Yeah, I wish we had Luffy. He'd be the first zoning <laughs> character. Uh, He'd be the uh, Dalsim of, of Smash Flash 2. Let's go. Um, I just saw a question on Slack. Um, t -Song. What? How is your hair so perfect? What? It's not even correct grammar. <laughs> oh. um, no, it's not. <laughs> how is well, your hair? How do you put in your hair? I don't put anything in my hair. Me too. That's bullshit. I've actually no, seen Tison's hair. I seriously hair. don't. I really don't. <laughs> I've seen his hair in Google Hangouts, and it's honestly like so messed up. I remember like, when I was the I remember when I was the kid who always like spiked my hair. I can't believe I did that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, black kids who spike their hair are the worst. No, but... What, did they spike their afros? Oh, my God. 
True, true. true. I want to see that. An albino black person spiking their afro. I don't know. My hair is just really big and curly, and when I flat iron it, it looks the way that it does. Oh, you flat so, iron it? Gross. Secrets. Hashtag secrets. You kind of. My hair is almost as big as T-Sons, actually. Yeah, how but far, mine's how pretty. How far does it go down your face? Huh? Craig has them. Uh, T-Son. What? How far does your hair go down your face? Like, do your nose, to your... Your what? Um... Uh, <laughs> like, Craig has so them. it's a bunch of different lengths. Like, what part, what part of my hair? I don't know the front, like, I like above talking. my forehead. Yeah, just pull, <laughs> pull any hair down. It goes what down is... to almost to my chin, like in between my mouth and my chin. Oh my god! I remember when my hair was like that. I had the big afro. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm sure you're having a real good time there, afro. Just thinking of all the <laughs> craigasm jokes you're thinking of in your mind. Oh, I'm, I'm go try. down to your chin. I'm trying. I'm trying. All this right. podcast has been almost going on for three hours. I think I think um, Afro needs to end it. Real yeah. Soon. Okay. I'm gonna shave I'll... the SSF2 logo into the side of my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little two with some flames in it. I'm I'm That'd gonna like great. have DK DK rape face <laughs> on the top of my hair. <laughs> have right. each frame of the Donkey Kong up be embedded in your scalp spinning kong like across my head <laughs> spinning kong across your head each frame jesus and then when i when i do when i just spin around it looks like dkb <laughs> jesus i'd have all anime girls TH. oh boy so i mean like level 9 computer in the how do you, dude? How do you feel about the level nine computers, Mars? Well, this fox is just here to death me, so I don't know really how I feel. Get <laughs> <laughs> fox is like level sixty, and then like Jigglypuff is like level fifty-five, and then everyone else is like level two. Mario level nine CPU literally just like shoulder, <laughs> shoulder back off the stage. It runs, it runs at you, and anytime you're a wave too far from it, it tries to shoulder bash you, and then it dies. It's just like you jump over it, I'm like, oh. Well, yeah, man. literally, like, I don't I don't know if you've actually played a level 9 computer recently. I know SS has, but... <laughs> what does that even mean? Alright, whatever. Oh. Anyway. Oh. I do every day, actually. I'm almost as bad as SS, if not worse. I play a CPU every morning. Literally, just put, <laughs> in training mode, just put a level 9 CPU Wario like on idle and then walk across the stage and then set it to attack it will always shoulder bash I think uh, the CPU is really good too because the, the Wario CPU is gonna help you practice power shielding or punishing shoulder you know? yeah I or jumping guess. over it <laughs> or jumping over it and then making him die so. I mean I still don't know how the Fox CPU up airs so well I'm saying, like, I got... How fun. does it, like, multi-shine, like... I can't do that. I, I can't do that either. <laughs> Someone said they did 11. They're like, oh, multi-shining is so easy in SSF2. I think it was on the Smash Bros. subreddit. They're like, oh, it's so easy. I can do, like, uh, 12. That was pre-patch, right? Pre-patch multi-shining was really easy. Oh. Because then, uh... It, we it was, this... like, a not even a month ago. We put the self hit stun to one, and then it just like completely changed it. Maybe. Anyway. All right, guys. Y'all, y'all need to for sure start posting to the subreddit because uh, I want to cry. I can't post everything, guys. <laughs> I can't post everything. Don't SS should not have to post everything. And I Sorry, think I man. should make a guide real soon. Like I probably should make a guide tomorrow about dash dancing, or something along the lines of that. Or dash out tilts. Like, a, just one mechanic, and then I'll just explore that. That'd be really cool. Other okay, than that, well, guys. I'm gonna cut this off now. Because we're nearing that three-hour mark. That we didn't want to reach. <laughs> yeah, but we're already, like, two hours and 50 minutes into it. Cause yeah. Because we're, we're really good at conversations. We're, we're working on it. Dude, we're so good at conversations. Discuss them, boys. <laughs> Time just flies. Dude, I'll just win at discussion nationals. <laughs> you really yeah, don't okay. want a discussion money match me, homie. I'll, <laughs> I'll meet you in grand finals, mate. Dude, imagine like a conversation tournament <laughs> where you have to uh -oh. be better than your opponent at a conversation. 
Sick. And it's like the criteria is like charisma, enthusiasm, and like the amount of dead air. <laughs> <laughs> Facial expressions. Of dead air. All right. And then like uh, the judge hands out random topics that you guys have to talk about, like the weather. Oh, mess you up. Now. Conversation, <laughs> conversation nationals. Get ready, guys. Grand finals yes. is like the stock market. <laughs> Grand finals is a uh, snail reproduction. <laughs> Let's go. The? <laughs> then you gotta get You gotta talk about it. What the? <laughs> so, go ahead, Afro. All play right. us out. Play play us out, Jim. <clears throat> so um, <laughs> thanks there for listening to the. One. God damn it. <laughs> oh, thanks for listening to the Super Smash Flash 2 podcast. Um, look out for the next episode where we talk about something else. Um, and yeah. If you guys thanks. have any topics, feel free to let us know. There some topics is. we can discuss is probably, uh, you know, some more history. We didn't really discuss on that very well. I think with... Tison being in here, he can really give us the full, like, how everything changed from 8B to 9A to 9B. You know, the big well, stuff. I don't know if I'll be here next week, but yeah. we'll see. We'll see. Um, I'll read off that um, on the forums we have uh, the Super Smash Bros. 2 flashcast on, under the uh, SSF2 discussion link. If you go there... There, you can put in your questions, and we'll read them there at a later point. Um, we didn't do it this time, but that's because, honestly, I didn't even think of it. But um, seriously, next time, I'll get to that. Oh, if uh, it's good questions. Quick question. Is, yep. Does Naruto have a combo into his Rasen Shuriken? Yes, he does. Uh, yeah, like literally every attack. So <laughs> dash attack, that. Rasen Forward Shuriken. throw. Dash attack, up tilt, up air. Uh, uh, clones, jab, side B, down B. Uh, one, one setup that I saw Scum do is a uh, sour spot up air into fair, and it works. Trust me. If they don't tech. I mean, off stage, like for an uh, edge, as an edge guarding tool. If it works. They, okay, yeah. If it's like you know, if they're not like seventy already. Yeah. Oh, also, this uh, flashcast art was made by Tyler. Tyler TM didn't know. One so. of the very first people who streamed this game, and is a long-term supporter of this community. We really appreciate Tyler making this because yeah. we don't know who else can make this. Tac three, he's too busy, and who? no one really has the skill to make it as well as Tyler. So just give everything to Tyler. Thank Big you so much, to Tyler. I appreciate you. And God bless. It's a good co- God bless. It's a good coincidence because it's Falcon versus Fox, and we critiqued the Falcon versus Fox, and we mm-hmm. played it, and we played it. But uh, yeah, that's it. I I, uh-huh. I tried really hard to uh, shout out Tyler TM like how your dad shouted me out, <laughs> because <laughs> I, I felt really good about myself when your dad did that on his Poke Smash stream. So if anybody else remembers that, I highly doubt it. But yeah. I'm Actually, SS is Foss is uh, the worst I've ever seen. I do not recommend learning the character from him, nor do I recommend copying his playstyle. He has the worst Fox to ever exist. Like, don't even try Shining Power. <laughs>